So want to welcome Brandon. Brandon uh, has uh, volunteered to come in and speak to us a little bit about his experience uh, as a local, uh, has has roots in Syracuse. Uh, and so I'm just going to hand it over to him, let him introduce himself and uh, kick it off. All right. All right. Hey, how's it going? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Um, yeah, so I figured I kind of um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I am um, kind of coming here just to give a talk, um, mostly just kind of trying to share my experiences, mostly really to just kind of share like any advice, opinions and observations I've had just from kind of the experiences I've gone through, um, generally coming from basically being uh, uh, homeless for a good while and, and then kind of coming out of the other side of that um, as a senior engineer um, working right at the moment for for Target. Uh, so yeah, I want to give a little bit of a background uh, about me. Um, so <clears throat> I grew up in the Watertown area, so not necessarily directly from Syracuse. Syracuse was uh, the big city. <laughs> uh, from where I was. And uh, yeah, you know, I grew up in a home, uh, pretty, pretty typical, abusive home. I didn't really have a uh, dad around and mom kind of kicked me out when I was roughly 15. And uh, spent most of my teenage years kind of like popping around, like sleeping in people's garages, you know, crashing on buddies' couches. Uh, you know, for a while, I was kind of hiding a, uh, uh, a tent behind a Dollar General out in Carthage. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, got involved, pretty typical setup, you know, get involved with, you know, some drugs, alcohol, stuff like that. Ended up dropping out of high school, 11th grade. Um, I definitely kind of just uh, felt pretty, uh, pretty not, you know, didn't really have a lot going on, just working at Burger King <clears throat> and uh, kind of being involved with, you know, living in pretty crummy places out in Watertown. I wanted to kind of do a little bit better. Uh, not having a high school diploma really blocked pretty much everything for me. Uh, I ended up getting my GED from the BOCES when I was about 18. Uh, and uh, kind of using that GED, I actually started at JCC, which is Jefferson Community College. Um, and uh, I started there around 2012. I was like probably about 20. Um, and uh, I ended up having my first child when I was 2014. So right when I was in the middle of uh, trying to get my associates uh, in computer science, um, you know, had to start real low, you know, kind of went there and you, you go, you go to community college and they kind of put you in the placements and, you know, pretty poor at math, not too great at writing. <laughs> so I ended up kind of having to do kind of a long, long trip there just to kind of get up to par with uh, where everyone else was, uh, people who were, you know, couple of years younger than me. Um, after I graduated JCC, you know, I was hanging out in Watertown. I tried to kind of make that work, make that associate's degree work, uh, you know, being up there, no opportunities really at all. And uh, I didn't really know where else I wanted to go. I kind of wanted to keep pursuing what I was doing, you know, uh, kind of in the STEM setup, kind of really enjoyed being a, being a programmer. So I actually ended up uh, moving to Oswego and uh, was able to successfully transfer to Oswego and I finished up my bachelor's in software engineering in 2018. I, uh, you know, from there, I kind of have worked in, I've worked in the local area. So I've worked for both sides of Saab uh, in Syracuse, the so Saab Defense and uh, Saab, uh, this commercial aviation side. Um, I worked for CACI out in Rome. And uh, I actually ended up doing a spell where I kind of moved out to, to Maine and um, did some work there for a couple of companies. Uh, now I'm back here in Syracuse. I kind of was able to get everything kind of together. Uh, I was able to buy a house in this area and uh, I work remote currently for Target uh, as a senior software engineer uh, on their back end, kind of handling their logistics with all their warehousing. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like thinking about my advice, my opinions, my observations about like kind of like how I got through that and kind of just like the crazy roller coaster ride that that was to kind of get where I am now and I think the biggest thing is like you know you look at the, the long stretch of road ahead of you and it's crazy intimidating 
Um, you know, personally for me, I remember when I was thinking about like, wouldn't it be awesome to get, you know, like pass a credit check so I could live in an apartment that isn't garbage. Uh, and, and thinking that was like near impossible. Right. And, uh, kind of just taking it one step at a time was really the biggest, uh, the, the biggest like contributor to my six, you know, what I was able to kind of achieve it, it, whatever success I was able to bring to myself. Um, you know, taking it one I, for a lot of times it was like, go just get to midterms. All right. Just get to the end. All right. Now get to the next, uh, semester and just keep going. Um, that kind of leads into my next, like, a uh, like observation I had about like kind of how I was able to get, get through it all is just, you know, sometimes you need to fully commit, uh, you know, at a certain point, like, it was really where I kind of had gotten to, um, you know, wrapping up JCC and kind of having this associate's degree and not really being able to do anything with it. You know, it's like back in the early teen 2000s. So you didn't really have a lot of this like stuff, like what they've got now, like in terms of these boot camps and, and online resources, it was still kind of a little bit, um, definitely a lot more difficult in terms of just like discoverability, being able to figure out how to learn this stuff on your own. So, you know, I was kind of stuck there with a degree and no one really wanted anything to do with me. I was in an area where no one had any jobs for me. And it was that time of just like fully committing. Like I didn't really have any money. I took whatever I had left from my last uh, little bit of loan that I pulled out of JCC from my last semester. You know, got a little crummy apartment in Oswego. I had a little 99 uh, uh, Mercury Sable that barely made it to Oswego. I ended up just kind of having to junk it as soon as I got down here and just, just hung out and said, you know, whatever, I'll sell everything I have to own. You know, I don't, I don't care what I got to do. You know, uh, I need to just fully commit and, and wrap this up because it, it kind of does become do or die. It's like half knowing some of this information is not really going to do anything for me. I got to fully, fully commit. Um, so kind of the next definitely thing that I, that I felt like brought me a lot of success is like what I, what I think when you're coming from like that background where you just kind of have more of a non-traditional background, some of the real big issues that, you know, I found is like, you know, you're starting to race people five miles ahead of you, you know, and like, how do I compete in the job market like that? How do I like get to a point like who's going to hire me when I'm, you know, X amount of years older than, than someone coming out of college too. And they've got the same skill set. you know, it's like my, my, kind of what I kind of came from understanding that is like, I got to be better. And so I really focused on like reading technical books, um, really tried to really focus on understanding the fundamentals, right? Like you can totally understand like, you know, how to write in a language, JavaScript, Java, you can understand how to use a framework like Spring or, or React or whatever, right? But it really pays dividends to, to really try to focus on in your spare time to understand the fundamentals of the language fundamentals of what you're doing. Um, I found that to be really critical for just having a much smoother time in interviews, really being able to kind of exude a lot of confidence in interviews. And it's brought me a lot further um, in my career from just being able to kind of speak from a place of, of confidence, because I've really spent some time to kind of dig myself um, a lot of deep knowledge about the fundamentals of, you know, from what I do, which is more back end engineering. Uh, beyond that, like committing to a language and a paradigm, but making sure that you definitely spend time to explore. Like for me personally, like Java is like, that's my language, right? So regardless, like I spent a lot of time really deeply understanding Java, how it works, um, how object oriented programming works, how functional, the functional paradigm works and building off that, like I've spent time, like just experimenting, right? Like you got to make it a hobby. So, you know, working with different languages like Rust, Go, uh, tooling around with JavaScript, right? Build a, I'll build a game here. I'll build a back end here. I'll build a front end here, whatever, right? Like trying things out. Um, but always kind of having that fallback of like, I really deeply do understand this and, and kind of being able to kind of go out and explore does really help you get a better perspective on that thing that you are focusing on. Um, just kind of thinking about some of the resources I utilize. I know OCC. So when I went to SUNY Oswego, OCC, uh, definitely there's a lot of people coming from there. A lot of non-traditional people coming from there, dudes, you know, my age or older. Uh, and I think it could be a great base, uh, to your fundamental knowledge. I definitely would say that like, if you're looking to get, you know, knowledge now, these, these boot camps are really going to get you in a better place, especially for a job. But from the perspective of like having a more fundamental uh, set of knowledge around just what kind of 
computer science is and like what, you know, how software engineering relates to that, how being a front end dev relates to that or full stack dev. Um, there's a lot of good stuff you can get out of community college for a really cheap price, you know, uh, whether or not you can utilize like FAFSA or New York State's TAP program. I ended up using that. I ended up walking out of a community college with a fairly low debt that I felt like it was worth the investment. Um, just because you do get a good solid handing on like data structures and just a little bit more low level stuff that, you know, props up a lot of your, your software engineering knowledge. Um, I do think hackathons are super useful. I definitely spend a lot of time to be, to be completely honest, most of the time I don't actually attend them. Usually what I like to do is just take what they're doing and then spend a little bit more personal time. So, you know, you got that 24 hours, 48 hours thing. I might take what a hackathon is doing and, and have my own little personal, like, let me try to do something in two weeks. You know, just kind of doing something, building out projects, getting a deep a little bit of an understanding about, you know, these different paradigms or different, uh, you know, well, you know, one time you're making a game and the next time you're making a CRUD app and, and different stuff. Uh, it just gives you a nice little bit of diversity, especially when you're interviewing. Um, this one, the, the, the next little bullet point, I definitely I definitely utilize a lot, which is, def, you know, sponge off people. You know, right now you guys are definitely in, in the classroom. You know, for me, when I was in uh, Studio Oswego and even JCC, you know, I glued to the people who I could tell were the smartest and had the most natural talent. Um, I always kind of had this, uh, uh, you know, I forgot why I heard this saying, but it was like, you know, if you want to fly with the eagles, you can't be hanging around with the turkeys. And I definitely always felt like that, where it's like, you got to be hanging around people who are like, going to always also raise you up. And being able to sponge off people uh, and kind of be around these super talented guys, especially over at SUNY Oswego, uh, really helped, I think, raise me to a level of kind of knowledge and understanding about, you know, especially at the time, Java and stuff like that, to where I felt pretty confident and, and had a pretty easy go of it, kind of getting out of college and getting jobs. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, just my last little other thoughts, notes. Um, I feel like university is definitely a high, super high upfront cost. Um, you know, from just to be completely transparent, I probably walked out in total, I was about 50K in debt. Um, but depending on kind of where you're trying to go with your career, like it can be a great investment, you know, in terms of the salaries you can command, especially being in a back end. Like for me, I really wanted to focus on the back end. Having that bachelor's does make it quite a bit easier to, to walk in. I think just in general, having some kind of like, you know, fundamental courses that you can even take one off, particularly for me, like understanding data structures is uh, a really good way to just be able to kind of cruise your way through a lot of like early interviews. And so that's what I mean. That being said, it's definitely not required by any stretch. I've definitely worked with tons of people um, at some of the different companies I've been in who never went to college or went to some, you know, some random college. Oh, I, I, you know, I knew a guy who had a history degree, right. But he just kind of turned it around and, and he was actually my manager. So, uh, there's definitely a lot of people out there, uh, non-traditional, not ha you know, no degree holding and, and they're in some pretty good positions. Um, and that's kind of where I do lead into like, I don't know if you guys have heard of lead code. <laughs> I assume some people definitely have, it's definitely a, uh, they, they call it the grind. I think lead code's a fantastic tool. Um, especially if you can swing uh, some of their premium, I think it's like roughly 35 bucks a month. Generally you can get like, you really only need maybe a month or, or two of it. Um, especially if you're kind of gearing up towards that like uh, interview process, what they really have that I find to be super useful is uh, they have these great online courses to help you with data structures in particular. So, you know, understanding list algorithms, you know, graphs, hash maps, you know, stuff like that. Uh, they really do walk you through it. They have some fantastic videos that just straight up whiteboard a lot of the basic algorithms. They kind of ramp up a lot of these kind of algorithm questions. And, you know, beyond just being prepared for any type of uh, interview where all of a sudden they're just going to drop you into a coder pad, which, you know, from my personal experience, I've definitely interviewed where they're like, no, 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 we're not going to do any of the technical in the second you walk in. Hey, click this link. We're going to do some questions. Um, you know, I felt like I've done a lot of lead code just in my spare time. I actually kind of find, I, I've gotten to the point now where I kind of find it to almost be like a hobby. Like it's just kind of doing little puzzles. And um, it definitely helps just with your fundamental understanding of how to use different data structures, which 
definitely is going to come in handy anyways in your professional life. But yeah, that ease of use of being able to go through an interview and feeling super confident about like, Hey man, no matter what they throw at me, like I'm going to be, you know, I'm ready for it. And uh, yeah, that's the last and not least, definitely just try to turn it into a hobby. Um, I was definitely not like a computer dude back, back in the, you know, when I was a teenager and stuff, I, I thought computers, you know, I always thought it was really interesting stuff, but uh, um, you know, over time and getting into college and kind of just choosing to go that route. Cause I felt like, you know, personally, it was just one of those things where like, this seems like the way the industry to get into where I can make some money and, and get a job. And um, so I, I kind of over time, just like, ha- you know, you spend all day doing in your, you know, professional life, just working with this stuff. I've definitely turned into a hobby, turning into a hobby and being able to have that passion for it has definitely opened a lot of doors uh, to different companies. And, uh, you know, I've got to experience some pretty working at some pretty cool places uh, by just being able to kind of like exude a lot of passion and, uh, you know, interest in just what I do day to day. So, uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, nothing too crazy. I just kind of wanted to, uh, come in here, kind of definitely just give some observations. I don't know if people are in some of the same situations or been in the same situations. Um, my biggest thing is definitely just drop me a line. Like there's my email. I got a GitLab on there. I still salt city. Uh, I'm on the hack, uh, the whatever the hackathon Slack or or whatever. Just get a hold of me. Like I have no problem, you know, helping point, you know, anybody in a direction of of job openings. You know, I you know I I've definitely worked at a lot of companies. I I still know people there. Um, I have no problem helping anybody out if they've got you know questions about different languages, data structures, want to work on projects with me, anything. Uh, I definitely just want to be here to help uh, and, and kind of give, give anybody a hand if they need it. Thanks so much. If you've got a minute to stick around, I'd love to open it up, uh, see if anyone has questions either in person or, or virtually just unmute your mic and shout them out or put them in the chat and I can read them aloud. Oh, first I want to thank you for, oh, hold on. First, I want to thank you for, can you still hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. First, I want to thank you for sharing your story. Um, I do have some similar, you know, share similar parts of your story. Uh, one question I had um, as far as uh, if someone wanted to make a web-based app for using targets like sales information, so uh, the objects that they have for sale and maybe the price, is there an API that uh, the general public can access? No, they, uh, Target is like weirdly super, um, hardcore secretive about everything that they're doing. And, uh, to the point where, um, you know, the ID IntelliJ, like they've got a new feature where you can kind of, uh, you can co- like almost like Google docs, like you could share your ID with other people and it kind of, but it, so it connects to a server through idea no go no no it's gonna pass code through someone else's server like we're not not doing it so they don't really have any any good way um to kind of surface a lot of that stuff and yeah unfortunately like some of the weird things you could try to get away with where you're just like running um you know scrapers or or something like that you probably get shut down pretty quick because yeah they they're uh, pretty on the ball about being hardcore secretive i think the second they got hacked I think somewhere in the mid 2000s, the, their credit cards got hacked. They are <laughs> not playing games. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I think uh, Brandon's had a very similar experience to what uh, a lot of your guys' background is. So um, definitely take advantage of any questions now if you have them. Um, Kim? Um, I don't have a question yet, but I probably will drop a line. Um, but I do have like a similar background as well. So it's, it's good to hear that, you know, there's other people um, going through the same thing kind of that I went through and, you know, that are on top. So, and then in the same field as me and I plan on going yeah i mean i think that's the crazy thing like it it starts to feel like get, it gets weird where you start to think like everything that used to be is just like a dream right like you're like did that really happen like i'm here now it doesn't even feel right but i i feel like 
it, it it's especially right now it's so crazy in, in the market where just start one of the biggest things i guess i never put on there but just start dumping stuff on your linkedin and you will be shocked at how many recruiters are just going to constantly be pinging you because everyone's desperate right now it's it's a it's a seller's market i mean you come out there you could probably I, right now, like I, I got a job working at Target just through a contractor. It was a one and done interview. Like I was there for an hour and then they they just dropped an offer. Right. Like they barely even asked me anything too much. Right? <laughs> like they, they just need people. So I would definitely say, like, take what you've got, especially when when you guys get out of here and, and make sure you're selling yourselves. And, and like I said, keep at it afterwards. And, and right now you're in like a prime time. Like it's definitely a lot easier. Even like I said, when I, when I was kind of trying to come up and learn this stuff, like it, it was really weird because like, you know, YouTube even was kind of like not really what it, what it is now. And, and uh, so I, yeah, I kind of went the more traditional route with college cause I didn't really know what else to do. Um, but yeah, I, I think just really learning this stuff and kind of, and like, I think we, when I looked at your guys' schedule, like you're kind of getting that full stack, so you're going to have a lot of that DevOps, even just like ideation to full prod kind of like knowledge. You're going to, as long as you can retain that stuff and feel pretty good about it and continue, like you're not going to have any issue, especially right now where it is. And everyone's embracing remote. No problem. I am targeting Minnesota. I'm not moving out there. So. <laughs> Thank you. We've got uh, two uh, questions in the Zoom chat. One was, did you find it hard to break into tech? Uh, it was definitely a bizarre. So it's kind of like you start to just get in this, this mode where you're just out there trying to like shill for yourself. Like I'm out here selling my services, right? And um, kind of being in the Syracuse area, like it wasn't too difficult uh coming out of Oswego like I actually ended up working I was working for kind of a, a little bit of a shady like subcontractor to Saab Defense like I was still in in college I was working like after school and uh you know it was just like an hourly kind of job and we were doing some bizarre subcontracts for for Saab at the time um I, I feel like in the Syracuse area if you're willing to kind of work with what they got I, I think that's like kind of the one drawback is that a lot of it is more back-end heavier java and c++ focused stuff you know especially with the con the defense contractors um but but yeah there's there's kind of a desperation you know i was able to get a job working at saab doing java uh stuff um not really uh having to put much you know i think it was again it was a one and done interview just because you're getting a brain drain in this area where you got people who the people who are going to college, like, you know, they, everyone at the time at least is, you know, I want to move to California or, you know, I want to get away from the cold. So you saw these companies around here who need people. And I feel like um, it's not necessarily super well known how many couple companies are out there, but you know, you've got SRC, you got, I think North of Grooms out here. I know Saab, you got Lockheed Martin. Uh, I think over in Auburn, you got, um, uh, people out there making I, medical devices. I can't remember their name. Um, you actually got quite a bit. So it, even in the local area, if you want to work somewhere in person, like there's kind of a lot of ways you can kind of shop around your resume and, you know, there's people out there looking for sure. Great advice. And yeah, something, something that we uh, try and reiterate on uh, during the program is, you know, just because we're teaching you JavaScript doesn't mean that you have to go out uh, after this and go get a job in, in, in JavaScript. Um, you know, the, the goal here is to get you guys to be a full stack developer. And um, we just happen to do that in JavaScript. But um, during the uh, career coaching and, and technical interviews that we do later on in the program, uh, you know, the, the goal is to get you guys confident enough to be able to say like, yes, I learned through JavaScript, but the fundamentals of computer science are the same on, on any language, right? Or the, yeah. the concepts yeah. of full stack are. I, I got a great, so like the weird thing, and I, she wouldn't be able to talk or, or cause she's not really good at that stuff uh, or, or into that stuff. But my wife, I've been with her since I was 15 and she also came from a uh, same background. Like we were, we were going through it all together. 
she doesn't have a college degree. She's an Android developer at a company I used to work at. I kind of helped her sneak into there. <laughs> um, and she, she rolled in, she had some Java uh, uh, knowledge. Like she had partially kind of gone through uh, college, but obviously having kids it changed things up for you. So she kind of had some like, you know, some base knowledge about like, okay, you know, she knew how to program. She had gone through the beginner classes, some of the couple of the intermediary stuff, but um, never did anything, never did any of the super crazy CS classes. And yeah, she really enjoyed kind of like developing apps in, in the time that um, there's a class at, at uh, Oswego where you just did it, Android development. So when I was at a job or I was at working at Wax out in Maine, you know, they had this mobile team and yeah, they had an opening and I kind of just snuck her in. It, it was one of those things of like, hey, you've got the interview in a week and a half. Go figure out Kotlin. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you know, Java, go learn, go learn enough to be dangerous. And yeah, I mean, that's the other thing, too, is that she kind of went to that interview. It was very clear that she wasn't like a superstar master. But a lot of times, you know, they're not necessarily looking for that. They're looking for someone who has that right mentality, who has that ability to grow. She's been there for almost three years. She she loves her job. And I think that that's one of those things where, you know, you might come in with a with a minimal skill set just because you're just starting out. But that's OK, because that's what they're expecting a lot of times if you're interviewing for entry level that's what they they know so kind of come in with that confidence about like what you what you know is is probably good enough and just be you know be ready for uh just some of those technical interviews yeah i i found in my experience with with interviewing is confidence is probably the the most important thing when it's coming into an interview right because like as a programmer you always have to learn and you're going to come into a job and not you know, you're not going to know every single tool or every single concept that they're using. And yeah. so, you know, not only having the confidence, but then being able to apply that confidence and saying, but I can learn that. And I've already learned a variation of that is a super helpful tip for, for interviewing. Totally. Yeah. Like do the live, the live coding, when you're on a coder pad and someone's just watching you, like I'll even admit it's rough, right? It's rough for me because you're sitting there, you're just like trying to type, you're, you're making little spelling mistakes because you're just kind of nervous and um, but what I found from like doing a lot of those interviews is that, yeah, you know, on the other side of that is someone who is not a superstar master of all this stuff, you know, uh, and they're there to kind of just more or less watch to see how you think, see how you progress through problem solving. And so you kind of, kind of come with that mentality where you just, yeah, take it easy, be calm, be confident in what you know, and be transparent. And a lot of times, you know, I, I've definitely seen that get people through the door. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, you got, we've been focusing on like thinking like an engineer, right? Thinking about uh, one of the projects we did was um, essentially design a touchscreen on a car that's largely controlled by the touchscreen, right? And thinking about all the different paths we have to go down there and, and, and planning all of that out and then breaking that down to think like an engineer. And I think that's really great advice is in those technical interviews, it's so easy to think that they're grading your code, right? And while that is an aspect of it, it's only one aspect of it. Oftentimes in those technical interviews, to your point, they're, they're trying to figure out, you know, how do you think like an engineer? Do you understand what questions to ask? Oftentimes they won't give you all the information you even need to complete the project. They want to make sure that you, you can figure out what questions to ask, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that that's great advice is, is that that technical interview is not just about your code. It's about talking through things, asking questions, you know, remaining human through the whole thing and actually, yeah. you know, showing that you can work with others and ask those questions. And uh, yeah, t totally great advice. Um, there was one other question in the chat. Uh, what do you think your biggest obstacle was when you started learning coding? Uh, yeah, I, my biggest obstacle definitely right in the beginning was, um, I didn't really get it. <laughs> I think that's a kind of a complicated, uh, answer. That's a little bit of, like, what I kind of mean by that is that I, I started out just really trying to understand Java and I didn't fully grasp or, or was unable to really wrap my head around okay so what do I do with this like I learned this language I kind of understand it but what do I even do with it you know how does it how can I make it apply to something 
Um, I, I was, I had a really rough time, like really understanding frameworks um, and, and uh, kind of like how you bootstrap a project and, you know, all the things that kind of come with, with uh, having a, a full fledged project, like, you know, a build tool and all those different things. Um, I, I think there was just one of those things like over time, just, just constant, consistent exposure to it. Um, it's like one of those things, you know, it's like, you're kind of looking at a, like a foreign language and every day you look at it slowly, it starts to kind of like start to make sense. And it's kind of how it felt for me. Like it took, you know, over, over the years of being in school, like by the time I got out of JCC, I thought I knew a lot coming out of JCC. Turns out I didn't know much at all and took a lot, a lot of time during Oswego to really have to like, number one, play catch up. Cause I was coming from a community college, uh, a, a community college, a, up in Watertown where there's, you know, not a lot of computer science interest at all. Um, and, uh, you know, after that exposure, like being around people who clearly understood it more than me and just spending a lot of time listening, I, I would watch a lot of talks on YouTube. So like they would do, you know, like they have like coder days for all sorts of different stuff. I watch a lot of stuff about like just Java and like how the JVM works and a lot of the underpinnings of things. It's like not only I need to understand every single thing that's being said, but just being exposed to it more and more, getting kind of treating it more like a hobby, like trying to make a point of every day of like, you know, it's kind of like, hey, man, if you did push ups every single day within a couple of years, you're probably like super built, right? Like it's that idea, like, hey, look at this stuff every single day, be exposed to it every single day. Over time, all of a sudden it becomes a secondhand knowledge. And, and yeah, now it's definitely one of those things where like where I'm in my job, like it feels like my mental toolbox is, is pretty big. like a lot of intuition, you know, as I become a senior developer, I've been in this for a while now, like, you know, you just feel so much more comfortable in your craft. Awesome answer. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. So, um, one, like, you know, this was kind of inspirational, uh, cause I also kind of come from the same background and you might've already answered this, but I wanted to know, like on the job, um, are you researching a lot to like on the job, like when it comes to coding or are you kind of just memorizing everything just from like over the years? Or yeah, this is kind of interesting because I really like, I very much connect with this question. I know exactly where you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you definitely get in this idea. Like I, I remember kind of like coming in and being like, all right, Java, like, all right, I kind of get it. I know how to like make, like a program and you know it could take some input off the command line and like do a thing with it and then you kind of see the the breadth of everything that's out there and you're just like how am i going to know everything how how do i how do i know how to use this stuff and then you get into your job and you see these guys have been doing this like i've worked with guys who've been doing this for 20 years and you just watch them google and everything under the sun <laughs> so there is definitely no way especially with the pace that it kind of comes out. Like, I, I definitely remember that, like feeling that need to be like, well, I have to be able to understand like all of it. Like how else would I be able to, you know, do this or that? And it definitely comes with just being like, just kind of for one of the things that I would recommend is like, yeah, like focusing, like being full stack and kind of like finding that thing that, uh, you know, works for you in the sense of, um, you know, where, where do you have a lot of interest in it? Is it, is it on the front end? Is it a proper full stack? Is it DevOps? I mean, there's like a million different types of jobs out there and you can kind of go with whatever you're comfortable in. Um, sorry, I've got. Sorry, I, I stopped yeah. your screen yeah. share just so All we right. can I was see just a little bigger. Like, I was like, things got weird. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, being able to kind of, um, pick that out. And then again, it's just like that constant exposure. Like you're going to be looking stuff up probably until the day, you know, they stop working. Right. Because it, it's just never changing. It's always a, a new thing. And then kind of when you end up in some of these companies, like it's one of those things where you get people who are like, I watched a YouTube video about this new thing. Guess what? We're doing it. And you, now you gotta go learn it. Right. And so it, it's just kind of like, definitely not something where you have to feel kind of weird about like totally not understanding everything or having to look up stuff. Like, I'm not gonna lie. If it's not Java, like I wrote, I wrote Rust. I wrote a ton of Rust services, but I'll tell you right now, if you told me, Hey, can you write 
a Rust like Hello World. I probably had to Google a couple things to make sure I got all the setup correctly and, and, and can run it and everything like that. So that knowledge definitely will escape you over time, especially once you start to like shift around into different things. Um, and you'll just have to keep refreshing yourself. So I, I definitely wouldn't feel upset at all. And in fact, I will literally tell you right now, I just had a technical interview today. I'm interviewing for another job. <laughs> and during that interview, the guy, I, he was like telling me to do something with Java streams. And I have written that kind of like level of Java. Like I've been doing a lot of stuff in Kotlin the past year, but, uh, yeah, I literally went and looked up the Java docs, like right there in the middle of the interview. Like it was just what you got to do sometimes. And I think everyone kind of expects that. It's like, I'm not going to know everything, but, but I think one of the things that they do look for. And one of the things I would recommend is know where to look and have a good idea of like where you need to go, like understand how to get good documentation um, in the places where like there's decent reputable um, examples and documentation for sure. Yeah, and, and I can echo that in all of my experience. I work with a team of senior developers and they're all looking up documentation, right? Like, I think the biggest red flag for me on, on a developer is someone who's not willing to use the docs or is like super insistent on, on figuring it out themselves. But, you know, that it, it, going through the boot camp, you almost get this deception of like, oh, Max knows everything. And it's like, no, 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 I don't know everything. I just practice before class because I'm going on stage, right? So like, <laughs> yes. I'm looking up the docs before class and making sure that I know what I'm teaching before I teach it. Um, but, you know, I, I'm using Stack Overflow and the bootstrap yeah. documentation every day and, you know, Googling how to, how to, Oh, what's that one method to get an item in the array or, you know, we'll get into more of the computer science fundamentals down the line. But, um, yeah, it, it's an interesting um, balance I personally have found of like there are certain methods that like you'll just remember, right? Like you're going to remember what a div is and what a class is and what an ID is and like. You'll remember that until the day you die if you're doing any website development, right? But then there are other things where you're like, I use this every week and I still have to look up the documentation every single time I go to use it. And and that's just how software development works, right? It's like yep. there's so many concepts out there that you're really not expected to, to know them all. Um, and I've walked out of technical interviews where they've told me like, oh, no, you're not allowed to use Google on this. It's like at what job as a software developer am I not going to have access to those resources while yeah. I'm doing the job? You know, like that's just a, a crazy concept to me. Yeah. And it's totally common and it's totally accepted. I mean, I, I, I've been to the doctor. I watched my doctor Google something when I was telling him about symptoms. So it's just the way it is these days. <laughs> uh so, yeah, I, I think that it, it's something that you totally feel comfortable with and mostly focus on like good searching uh, habits and, and knowing where to go and knowing where like good, to, you know, I, I like to when I'm doing stuff with Java or I'm doing stuff with common, like I like to feel cool. Like, I'm going to, the, you know, I'm not just Googling a problem. I'm going to go to the docs and find it so I can show them like, yeah, that's of course, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not just going to, you know, of course, in your day to day, if you've got something that needs to be done today, you might just let me go find a tutorials point or some kind of random medium article, whatever. Right. But yeah, it's totally normal and definitely shouldn't in any way feel weird about it. It's going to be the way it's always going to be. Awesome. Any other last questions? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for coming in. You're welcome to stick around uh, for part of class. If, if you're interested, we're, uh, <laughs> Uh, currently recreating a part of a of a Google form and kind of working through the HTML and CSS of of all oh, of nice. that. <laughs> uh, so you're you're welcome to stick around if you want. If not, no no big deal. Uh, we'll have the recording up tonight uh, on on YouTube. But I really appreciate you taking the time and coming in and and speaking to the students. Yeah, I, I really appreciate being able to kind of talk to everybody here. Like I said, like there's a real emotional part of me that just like like. I, I want to see, you know, I, I know what, where a lot of you guys are. And, and I definitely, like I said, like no issue at all, reach out to me with anything. Like I, I will totally try to be as big of a resource as I can. I just want to see people kind of, kind of get to the same level. And I think there's just so much out there right now that you, you guys are in a great spot. So uh, yeah, I, I'm going to probably check because I haven't eaten yet. I'm, I'm really hungry, <laughs> but, but again, it was super awesome. Like, uh, thanks for kind of allowing me to come in here and, and just give some observations about, you know, how I got to 
got to where I was. Um, and, and I really appreciate being able to chat with you guys today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Awesome. Give me one minute. I just need to switch around my laptop so I can start off a screen share. But um, as I'm doing that, um, what did we cover last week? What were our light bulb moments? What were our frustration moments? What did we think about the homework? Did we hate it? Did we love it? Did we find it was a lot? Do we want free code camp to go burn in a dumpster outside of common space? How are we doing? I actually really like free code camp. Yeah, that's where a couple of times where I was like stuck on a piece of code for so long. And every time I tried it, I ran the test, you know, it was still wrong. But it's like I like that when you click on like get a hint, it it breaks down. You know what I mean? It, it breaks it down so that you understand it. So it's like, you know, and you could keep kind of references back and forth. Did you watch the videos? I did not watch the videos yet. I need to watch the video. Oh, yeah. Each time I watched all the videos, each time, oh, even yeah. if I knew the answer, I still watched the video and listened to what the guy had to say. So right. it took me a long time to finish. Um, but I watched the videos and I looked at the hints. I looked at every resource they had available, mm. especially with the more complicated ones. Yeah. All the resources. Yeah. Yeah. And if you ever get one, I think it's just as important to be able to admit what you don't know while you're learning, right? And so if you ever get to one of those and you're like, I got the big green check mark, but I got no freaking clue why I got the check mark or why it's doing that, or, you know, yes, it's working, but I still don't feel like I truly understand it. Drop those questions in, in either the live stream chat with, with the channels or uh, with the students or dump it in the student channel, right? Um, where where all the instructors are and all of that. And um, we're happy to talk through it because oftentimes like, yes, Free Code Camp is great because it's got such a big community and there's so many people trying to help you through it. But oftentimes like you may just not understand what they're trying to explain, right? Um, and so always feel free to um, ask more questions or be like, you know, even if you're not stuck and you have it working, be like, why is it this way? I've, I've watched YouTubes on this. I've gone through all the resources free code camp looked at and, you know, I read the documentation. I still don't get this. There are things in, in programming where it's like, I must be stupid, but I still don't get it, right? And that's okay to admit. Um, it's okay to, to reach out and, and ask questions on that. Um, and it's also okay to say, like, I get this. Like, I don't need 30 exercises in a row for free code camp. Like, like move me on to the next section, right? Um, and that's also okay. If you feel like you're really getting these concepts, it's okay to skip a couple of them. So we'll be peppering in free code camp um, definitely throughout out the whole program, uh, reinforcing some things for JavaScript, um, going to try and get a little bit better about posting them well in advance. So if you guys want to get a jump start on that before all the homework assignments, um, are due, uh, we will definitely be doing that. We're going to be doing a lot of project-based learning coming up. So just to give you a sneak peek of what's coming up in the next three weeks, really, um, we are going to wrap up that Google Form uh, project uh, from Thursday, just because I don't like leaving things unfinished. And I think we're pretty close to the end there. We're going to switch over to uh, recreating a news website. And this is going to start the beginning of our iteration process, right? Where we are going to cover a concept and then we're going to do the exact same concept just a little differently. And then we're going to do it again a third time. So you're going to really hate this new site by the end of it. But what we're going to do is start out with making this website on desktop. And we're going to go through and we're going to create our, our reverse wireframes, right? We're going to grid everything out. Hopefully this is going to start to feel repetitive because it's really the beginning of every project. Then we're going to do all of our file setup and get all, everything going there and make sure we got VS Code rocking and rolling and we're feeling comfortable. Then we're going to go in and go component by component and build it out, right? And hopefully you're going to get more and more comfortable with the, the um, div system. You're going to start feeling like I'm reiterating concepts. Then we're going to go do this project again from scratch, but we're going to do it for a mobile website. And we're going to see how much of our code we can use from the desktop and bring it over to mobile. 
and then we're going to mash the two together for our third iteration and say, hey, this is how we can make a responsive website. Um, so that's kind of the, the game plan for at least the next couple days. Um, just more practice on HTML, getting comfortable with that. From there, we are going to move on to the Netflix website. So, you know, when you go to Netflix.com and it's got everything laid out and all the, the uh, images that you can click on and watch, we're going to go do that project next. And we're going to get more comfortable with the grid system. And we're going to think mobile first on that design and think about how should this look like on a, a, a desktop or I'm sorry, on a phone and how does that scale up? Um, and then finally, we're going to get to Amazon.com. We're going to go remake an Amazon product page and show, hey, we can really make any page, throw it at me. I'm going to grid it all out and I'm going to dive into to how that works. Um, then we're going to run into our project week. So that, that portfolio project that's getting a nice thick layer of dust over there, all that planning we did in the wireframes, all of the, the Trello project work, we're going to come back and revisit all of that and say, time for your portfolio. We need to get a portfolio going for you by week six of this program, right? What's that? A fifth of the way, a sixth of the way into the program. So that every time we get to the end of a week and you've got another project, I'm going to be hitting you up on one-on-ones and going, why isn't that project in there yet? Why haven't you updated that? Because every project you do, you are more attractive to an employer, right? And saving that until the end, you're going to have this giant pile of projects and you're going to be like, I don't even remember doing this project. Max had me doing so many projects, I forgot about this one, right? So we want to get that portfolio set up for you in week six. That's our first project week. Um, so that that you are you have that foundation that you can run with. Um, we're also working with a UI specialist, hoping to bring her in um, in the project week and do some consulting with you on your UI, on about thinking through your portfolio, hopefully doing some one-on-one -on -one time there. Uh, so we're still working out those details, but that is what's coming up. And then I'll just do one more preview week after that. The week after the project week, we bring in Nathan Evans. So you get the first full week off from me of not having to hear my voice. And Nathan's going to come in and start doing work uh, with DevOps. So he's going to help you deploy your portfolio site. He's going to help you link up a domain and understanding the domain name system. He's going to touch on different types of hosting, right? You you may have heard of GitHub um, and, uh, you know, uh, GoDaddy is a big one. And there are a couple others out there. He's going to break down the different types of hosting and making sure you've got context for all of that. Um and then that's just the tip of the iceberg because he comes back later in the program and goes, hey, remember all of that deploying stuff? Yeah, it gets even more fun when we've got a server and a, and a database to deploy with it. So he'll come back later in the program. Anyway, that was a very long rant. Uh, what else did we learn last week? What were our, our light bulb moments? What worked really well? What were you really frustrated on? Anything like that? Yeah. CSS, Bootstrap um, grid. Element. Yeah. The, the, for me, the grid was a light bulb moment. The yeah. Columns. Yeah, and I, I think grid is one of those things that's very polarizing. Either teachers think it's it's the greatest thing th since sliced bread and want to teach it first thing. Uh, and other teachers will say, no, 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 learn the hard way to do it first. So you've got all the guts of CSS down and then show them the tool, show them the way. And to me, breaking that website down, not, not only is the grid helpful for the code to be able to show up where we want, it's also super helpful for us as an engineer to break that down and start saying, we've got this massive website. If we just start thinking about the components of the grid, then we can work on each piece, right? And that's often the hardest point of breaking something down is not, the all the individual pieces it's knowing where to take the first stab at it and say what's the first piece that i can chip off of that and that's why i hammer home the grid so much not only on code side and indentation and layout but also on that engineering thinking of if we just have a way to get our foot in the door and start breaking things down we find that chipping away and getting them into smaller pieces is often pretty easy what else from last week?
All right, we feeling like we know where we're headed at least. Part of part of doing a retrospective and looking back at last week, I think, is also super important to know where we're headed, right? So uh, today's goals are to finish up the 30-second feedback site. Uh, that will probably take us right up to our 7 o'clock break. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to start breaking down a new site and we're going to start getting our project set up. And um, I'm hoping to have all of that done by eight o'clock. So we have a full half hour at the end for just catching up, trying things on your own. Of course, I'm going to take breaks as we go. Um, but part of this experience is just knowing what you're building and having some freedom to run, right? Because oftentimes in the workplace, even as a junior developer, you may have a couple hours a day of meetings, and then you may have a couple, an hour or so with a senior developer with mentor experience, but then you've got your whole day ahead of you, right? And so part of this is also knowing, hey, sometimes I just need time to play around and figure out my code and get it working and being able to ask questions. So we're going to try and save the last half hour of class for opening it up. With that said, if at any point you feel like I'm breaking the speed limit, feel free to get out your ticket book and go, whoa, 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 Max, slow it down. We, we, we need a breather here. Um, and, and I will definitely take a breather and let uh, uh, other people catch up. Uh, if you're in person too, you don't have to unmute your laptop. This speaker up here is also the microphone. So you can just say out loud, like you don't have to worry about unmuting yourself first. Yes. Awesome. Actually, it will sound really bad. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so I did not get to like start my feedback form at all Thursday because I was still working on the weather um, with Caitlin. So I'm like, are we going to, are you kind of like backtracking a little bit and then finishing or do you still have the starter code? Yeah, great question. So I'm going to upload the starter code right now. With okay. that said, if you want to just kind of go along for the ride on this one, that's also completely fine. I'm not going to make the 30-second feedback form an assignment in Canvas. So if okay. you kind of want to just ride along until break, and then when we come back from break, when we dive into getting the new site set up, that's completely fine. Um, but I am going to upload the starter code right now, and I'll throw it on the outline um, just so if you do want to follow along, uh, you definitely can. Okay, thank you. Uh, great question, though. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, give me one second to drop these links in. This one, and this is going to be this one. There are two files you'll want to download, and then you'll want to pop those open in VS Code. Um, if you uh, want to follow along with the starter code, but like I said, no big deal if you uh, just want to kind of go along for the ride and finish things up. Um, okay, let me pop open um, so everyone remembers. Um, this is not sharing my screen. Move this out of the way, share here. Okay, um, so this is the 30 second feedback form that we're working on. I seem to remember us getting this done and our name and the basic layout for the grid. Um, but I th think we've got a couple more to go there. Is there a question? Yeah, yeah we don't see the code in the live stream. Um... The, channel. the starter codes in the um, outline document. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank I was just looking for that too. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, let me post it in Slack as well because that would be a good place to put it. Download. It was like a Google Drive download. Do you remember that from one day last week? You just click the link and, um, oh, mm, Max, uh -huh. I don't have it. Again. Oh, uh, I I know I just changed those. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe you. It just Hold on. I'll get you guys access. Uh yeah. get link. 
anyone with link. Link. Okay, now you should be able to download those, but I'm also going to put a copy of them in um, Slack in case it's easier to pull them there instead of pulling them from the outline. Um, yeah, that works. for and slack and live stream and week three day one we're gonna say um oh you know what if you just scroll up to thursday's live stream at 8 46 that is where we left it off so if you want to take it from there in Slack, that's also fine. Okay, so let's just pop this open. Um, and I'll also do a live share so you can follow along. Um, this is being temperamental and not snapping for me and driving me crazy. There we go. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start a live server. This is where we left off. And I'm going to also share this with you guys. And I will put the live stream link in. Okay. Give everyone a second to join into the live share so that you can see my code. You should be able to pop open feedback.html and feedbackstyle.css. Um, and then this is our area where we are working. And I also have this tab open so I can reference it. You might have already um, said the answer to this, but um, are we still working in like week two, day four? Yeah, so week two, day four is the starter source of my code. Um, it probably isn't a bad idea. Um, now, now I, it isn't a bad idea to copy both the feedback.html and feedbackstyle.css into a week three, day one folder if you want to, or you can keep working off of your week three, day four code. Uh, I'm sorry, week two, day four code, whatever you prefer. Um, because we're not turning in this assignment, it's not a big deal um, if if you, um, you know, just keep working on the existing copy. Uh, Max, uh, what link are we using again for yours? For the, um, what is it called? Uh, it's in the live stream channel. Did you want me to here? Uh, yeah, it's in live stream, and I'm guessing Caitlin's about to dump it in Zoom chat as well. And I see a couple of you guys joining here, uh, so glad that's working out. Um, and if anyone's having trouble joining a live stream, um, and you're either in person, um, or if you can stick around after class, we can try and get you set up there because I do think the live the live share sessions are a pain to get set up, but they'll be beneficial throughout the course of the program. All right, I think we're gonna get started. So um, if we look at our mock-up here, and I, um, let me see, is it gonna let me zoom in here? It is. So in addition to having our, how well did you get the topics tonight? We also have, um, how would you rate the teacher, right? And this looks uh, almost like an exact copy. So this should start queuing us up for thinking about this concept called dry code. D-R-Y, it's an acronym for don't repeat yourself. And so we don't quite have the ability to make components, but we should be able to recognize them in our design. And a component is really anything that can be uh, reused, right? So, hey, this whole thing's got a question and then the buttons are all the same, the scale's all the same. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just reuse that snippet of code? And so in React, we'll actually have the ability to do that. But for right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the, um, I'm going to figure out where my card was, right? And that card is here. And then we want to copy all of this. The question will change, but the terrible, the radio buttons, all of that. 
So I'm going to click on my div here and it's going to highlight it in that light gray. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see where that light gray ends. So I'm going to take my, my cursor. I'm going to put it at the end of that div. I'm going to take it all the way up to the top, copy it, go back down here, paste it. And then before I forget, I'm going to say, how would, uh, how would you rate the teacher tonight? I'm going to save that. I'm going to come back over to my code. I've got my live server running and bam, because we've already got our spacing applied to each one of the cards, we were able to just copy and paste that in and make really good progress. And these radio buttons should actually work and are nice and styled, so we should be good to go there. Okay, for our next trick, uh, we are going to look at, we've got another question that said, how was the speed of tonight's class? So I'm actually going to use most of that same um, card, right? So I'm going to put my mouse at the end of this div. I'm going to scroll up and make sure my div is for my question card because I don't want it going in the card body. I want it to be another question, right? So I'm going to come down to the end of that. And because all my indentation is lining up, it's much easier to save that and, and get it in and make sure our divs are going in the right spot. So I'm going to say, how was the speed of class tonight? Good thing we don't ask, how well can your teacher type? Okay, now we've got this one through five excellent going on, but we want it to be different, right? Because this, this is a vertical list. This isn't a side-by-side -side list. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to just nuke out all of this. And I need to make sure my div, that div line, see how that line is just a little bit lighter gray? That's also helping me identify where my div starts and ends. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to delete that out. And I'm going to say, are we still lining, lining up? So I'm just going to save that, right? Even though I'm not putting in any new content yet, I just want to make sure that this is appearing where I want it to appear. We didn't have things shift over. We didn't uh, miss a closing div. We've got a good spot for our card body. Uh, so we know what's going on there. So what I'm going to do is we can identify that this is a column of buttons and then our the rest of our text goes over there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, we're going to do a div class and we're going to start with a row because columns always have to go into rows and I'm going to remember to close my div and fix my indentation before we keep going. And then I'm going to say, hey, I want a div class and I would like just a small little column to put my radio button in. So I'm going to say R here. I'll go back and do my radio button first. I want my layout working before I do any of my components or content or styling. And then I'm going to do another div class. And this is just going to be a column. And we're going to let it figure out the spacing on its own because it will take the available space left or split up the available space if we don't specify a size. And I'm just going to say answer. So I'm going to come back over here, look in, and I've got my radio button here and my answer over here. That's exactly what I want. So now I'm going to come up. I'm going to steal one of my inputs here for the radio button. I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to say sloth. I'm going to come back over and I've got my radio button and I've got my sloth. Okay. So now we should be able to just take our whole row, paste, and now I need to reference our mockup sloth, too slow, just right, too fast, and roadrunner. Come back over here, check it out. All right, that's okay, and Bootstrap's helping us out, but it's not perfect, right? We want to make some adjustments there. We want to get some spacing going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top here, and we're going to add an ID on this that says speed question. 
So I'm going to go back to my style. I'm going to target my speed question. And then I'm going to say for every row in that speed question, go ahead and add a margin to the top of it. Uh, let's just do a margin bottom because that will space it out of uh, 20 pixels. See what that looks like. Come over here. All right, that, that doesn't look terrible, but now it's uneven. Maybe margin bottom wasn't the right option. So let's split that. Let's say there's going to be a margin top of 10 and a margin bottom of 10. All right, that's, that's looking pretty good. Maybe we want to get our um, little bullet points over a little bit. So we're going to say, hey, in the speed question... If you find any input, go ahead and move that off the left by 10 pixels. Now that move that over a little bit, I can say 15. Okay. Pretty good. That looks good to me. Let's go back and check. We've got uh, just one more at the bottom that's going to look just like this top one and our submit button. But before we get into that, I want to just give everyone a chance to catch up if you are coding along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dump this code into the live stream channel. Thank you. You're welcome. Just before you close, make sure there's space. Just remember Yeah, just make sure there's space. Yeah, that's like a fun little trick you accidentally found out. <laughs> okay, that code is in Slack. If anyone is stuck, um, <laughs> Feel free to unmute and ask questions, and I'm going to kick off our poll that we normally do just so I've got an idea of if people are following along or just going along for the ride, which this one is is uh, totally fine. Uh, but where we should be is we should uh, not only have our additional card added here, we should also have how is the speed of class tonight. And if you're in person, uh, hopefully you have Zoom open and can still vote in that. And if you're still working on it, don't vote. We'll give you guys a couple minutes to catch up. Max, I think you need to make me co-host because I got a poll. Um, I thought I made you co-host. I don't know. Maybe you are co-host. Oh, oh, on the other, I'm on my. That's why I'm on my actual laptop. Like the one that that you made co-host is the one that's up on the TV. Oh, well now yeah. you're a co-co-host. Co-co-host. There you go. <laughs> All right, we've got eight people in, which makes me think a couple people are still working. Let's just give everyone a couple more minutes. If you've got any questions or you're stuck anywhere, feel free to let us know. Oh yeah, you don't even have to like not really? You're gonna try it again. Got ten out of students voted and hopefully I get one more response. Oh, we just got one more response. So looks like we're about half and half, half going along for the ride, half trying to work through it. Um so I'm gonna keep going there unless anyone has questions. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, just shift. And then you can just fill in like... Okay. The... Let's try and wrap this up in the next 15 minutes. Again, if you're just going along for the ride, that's completely fine on this one. I know we're kind of coming into the, to the middle of it, so no big deal. Uh, if you're just following along with this one, um, you do not... Uh, you will not have to turn this in for homework. Okay. So the last thing I need to do is I need... 
at my bottom, I've got notes for the instructor, and this answer field looks a little bit different than this answer field, right? I know this is super tiny, but Google does not make it easy for me to zoom and scroll. Can I, oh, maybe I can zoom this way and then, there we go. Okay, so we got notes for the instructor tomorrow and your answer down at the bottom. So instead of taking the whole card and deleting things out again, I'm just gonna take these top two divs and then I'm gonna leave my cursor in this div. I'm gonna follow that line down. I'm gonna put that in, but whenever I paste opening divs, I want to, before I forget, put in my closing divs. Now we could do this, but this is gonna be really confusing, right, for figuring out if where our button goes underneath it. So I'm just gonna get the indentation right because it's so much easier to fix indentation as you're writing the code than it is to fix it after it's written and the indentation is wrong. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna scroll up and just see, we're using an H6 for our questions and say any notes for our awesome instructor. And then I'm going to do another div class row. And because we know that this is full width, right? If we go over, it spans the whole width of the card. We're gonna just come back up and look at how we used our input up here and instead of putting in a in a call six, we're going to just put it in a regular call, which will make it span the whole width. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to remove our column width. And I'm going to come over here and look. And here's any notes for our awesome instructor and your answer in there. Let me just pull this over. Ooh, that's not doing what I want. That looks to me like it is... Ah, here's our problem. You see how this is off-centered? We've got equal spacing going on here, but we don't have equal spacing over here. Well, that's because I told it, hey, in the speed question, take any input and add some margin to it. Well, the speed question is the question all the way up here. Why is it applying down here? Well, I broke a rule. I reused an ID. I, I Because I copied and pasted, we have to be careful about what we're copying and pasting, right? So I'm going to just take out that ID because I don't want this isn't the speed question. And when I come over here, now that is going to be nicely spaced and look the way I want it to. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to just throw in our little button. And it looks like there's a, a hidden button down there. One says clear form and the other one says submit. So I'm going to do my very last row. And let's just assume that's going to be a column that's too wide. And then I want to go look because we've got two different buttons here. So I'm going to go to the bootstrap documentation and I'm going to look at what my button options are. Uh, so that's going to be under components and then buttons. And this button looks exactly the way I want it to, right? That's got the, the filled in color. So I'm going to just copy my primary button, paste it in here, and say submit form. Come back over. Now, there it is, but it, that's not pretty, right? It's not wide enough. It's wrapping on two lines. So I'm going to make that column a little bit bigger. That gave it some breathing room, but I don't like that color. I want it to be that, that purple, right? So I'm going to say, hey, this is, um, let's add an ID here that says submit button. I'm going to go to my feedback. I'm going to add a new one that says submit button. And instead of trying to find that exact purple that I want, I'm going to go up to the top and I know I've got that purple color going on, which is showing up right up here. And so let's just keep that theme going. I'm going to come down here and say my background is going to now be purple. Save, come back down here. Now I've got my purple button going on and that fits pretty well with the theme. So we've got one last thing to do and that's our clear form button over here. So let's go back to Bootstrap and see if we've got any other button options. And we've got this nice outline button. It's not quite the same as our mock-up, but I think that that's going to be, we got block buttons, we got widths, we got states, but I think that outline is going to be what we want. It's going to uh, set it off nicely. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to just grab 
uh, one of these uh, primaries. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do my other div class equals call. I'm going to paste it in and say clear form. Come over to my code again. Now we got this blue button going on. I don't want it to be blue, but I do want to change that up a little bit. So we're going to add another ID and we're going to say clear button. And we're going to go back to our styles and have a clear button. And we're going to say, hey, the border is going to be one pixel solid and purple. Okay, well that got our, our button working. That didn't fix our text color though. So let's say our color is also going to be purple. Okay, that's looking good now. And we've got one last thing that we, that well, two things. One, it's bothering me that that's at the very bottom of the page, right? I want some breathing room so we could scroll down a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my feedback. I'm going to add an ID to my button row called, you guessed it, button row. Target my button row here and add some margin to the bottom of, let's just say, 50 pixels. So I've got plenty of room at the very bottom of my screen. And you'll notice if we hover over this, it goes to that blue color. That's actually using um, an, uh, a specific hover effect that we can use with CSS to target different states of buttons. So what we can actually do is we can target our clear button and we can say, hey, when you're hovering over the button, the background should be purple. So when we hover over that, we got our purple, but now we lost our color. So we can just keep on going here and saying our color, when we're hovering over it, should be white. So hopefully this is letting you think of, yeah, Bootstrap's a great starting point, but I can kind of customize it and cascade my own CSS over their CSS to get it to look the way I want. And then the last thing we need to do is I want that button over on the right. So we've got a couple options. We can actually put in a column here um, that's going to push it over, or we could just align it right. And that's probably what we want to do. So I think what we can do is here just add a text end that pushed it over for us. And then the last thing I want to do is I'm just going to make these two equal column widths. So that way, when we shrink down the site, they're, they're going to scale uh, the way we want it to. Actually, my window hanging off the screen there. Okay, so now when we pull this down, this form actually looks pretty good on mobile the same way that it looks on desktop. Okay, I know I was going plenty fast there. I wanted to give us seven minutes before break for anyone to have questions. If you were along for the ride and have questions, ask them now. If you are still working on catching up, feel free to work on that. And if you have questions in the next six minutes, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, go ahead and take your break and I will see you guys at 7.20. I'm also going to put this in the live stream channel so you have it. And when we come back, we will start working on our new site. When you save your um, your HTML file, it's not showing up in my browser. Um, if you go to the live share icon, on your in your browser. Um, no, in, yeah, in my VS Code. Okay. And then go to the shared server section. There should say live server there. Okay. Double click on that and see if that gets you the latest code. Yep. Thank you. No, no problem. I can I can catch up at home and just to have it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Because mm -hmm. you were in Fort Bonner. You were in the breakout room too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can honestly, this would be good for you to do like as a catch up practice project because you didn't start it with them. So yeah, yeah that's perfect. I know because I, I was getting confused with so many of the divs and then I acted down. Like, I think he started typing and it flew down to the bottom. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot but it's good practice especially for lining up your code honestly because there are so many dips yeah and i noticed he has like four lines and i only have two so i'm like <laughs> I'll, I'll wait i'll go back over it yeah yeah, and, and, and it's good practice for this homework. This week is going to be relatively light on homework. Um, and also, like, getting lost in, in the number of closing divs is very much a thing you will have to do in, in your career, right? Of, like, practicing getting the indentation right, staying on top of it. Like, this isn't just the example products. Like, uh, I, I can show you some of my code that may be, I'm not joking, 25 div levels deep. Um, just because you, you, you've got to get all of that layout done and you're working on this tiny little component and you're like, oh, well, in this big overarching app, I need to go like nine levels deep to get to that one specific thing I'm trying to style. So um, it's really good experience to practice it. But at the same time, like if you want to just kick it around and, and you get half of it done and you're like, all right, I'm feeling good about this, like I could finish this. That's also fine. You don't need to go all the way through it and get every component of it done. Okay, thank you. Can you take a look at my code? Because I, um, I thought I caught up, but um, it's not lining up the way I wanted to. <laughs> yep. Um, so the issue is over here with the submit form and the clear button. Okay. Um, so you're just missing a dash in your uh, line 160 column. Uh, Look at how you do a column on 138. Yep, you got it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You were so close. <laughs> All right, let me... Sorry, I got to figure out how to stop sharing. There That's we go. <laughs> Thank you. Stick around for the next two minutes if anyone else has questions. Uh, yeah, Max. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can hear me, right? All right. Yeah, I can uh, hear you. So it looks like I have the code right, but for my form, my buttons uh, are still showing on like the uh, uh, white part for any notes for our awesome instructor. Okay, go ahead and share your screen if you can, and let's take a look. Okay, let me uh, actually go back to your browser just so I can see what's going on there. Okay, uh, which part? Uh, just swipe over to your browser so I can see what your code looks like. Oh, okay. So your buttons are showing up in the card itself. Yeah, okay. I kind of made sure, like, um, you know, oh, the, that, well, not the closing. Like, the, I made sure where my open is ended. But like, like, not, you know, okay. Um, question card, speed question, okay. card body, row, row. Um, I think it's a closing div in the card. Yeah, so opening, yeah, closing, talking. opening, closing. Yep, right. you're missing one closing div. Oh, so you've got an opening and a closing, an opening and a closing, yeah. an opening, I'm sorry, a closing and an opening, and then an opening and no matching closing down here. <laughs> so throw another closing div in there and then you can always go back and fix your indentation um trying to figure out uh yeah okay i think i deleted it by okay. yeah so your your each uh so from this down to this should be indented another level because you opened the div in the in that card body right here, but then you didn't go over another line. 
So, so 151 through 156 should go over a level. And you can always highlight all of those lines and hit tab once and it will move it over for you. But you've already started on, on that. So um, so your 155 should go over. Actually, if you highlight um, 156 through 158 and just hit tab once, that's going to move them all over. And then your 155 just has to go over one as well. And so now you're lined up. Okay, so if I didn't delete that div, how come it wasn't there? I just can't remember deleting it. Right? You you must have missed it when you maybe when you copied and pasted it in. Uh, you I think on that one I copied and pasted the two opening ones and then typed in the two closing divs manually. So it's possible that you just missed it in the copy and paste or you didn't close it out. Um, it's very easy to miss a div. I don't think I copied this part. Yeah, I, I I I can't tell you without like going back of of a play by play of your screen, but um, it's a very common thing to to miss a div. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyone else for questions? I got one more. Yep. Um, for for my clear button, um, I don't know why it's showing up blue over here. Okay, yeah, I did some styling on that. If you save your error feedback.html and then switch over to your style. Um, clear button. Uh, so it should be... Uh, no, all that looks right. Go back to your HTML for me. Um, so instead of using btn primary on the clear button i use btn dash outline dash primary uh line 162 or uh 165 165 so instead of that one? yep just added uh instead of btn dash primary make it btn dash outline dash primary oh, oops and then save that and see, there you go. Okay, thank you. No problem. Yeah, I copied and pasted that, so it was probably easy to be like, oh, he used the same button and drop it in, but that, I just <laughs> use a different bootstrap styling for that. Gotcha, thank you. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Question. Yep. So I'm still just messing around with it in the beginning, but um, you're just, when there's like an open div and an open div, you're just pressing enter, enter to make it like, so it, so the closing div just keeps going. Correct. Thank you. Yep. And, and then whenever I get my closing div there, I make sure the indentation is right on both the opening one and the closing one before I put anything inside of it. But yes, I'm just enter entering to get it to push down. So I've got some space to work. Thank you. Last chance for questions. Okay, take a break. We'll see you guys at 720. Ooh, we're Zoom recording. So we're gonna start work on a project that is probably going to take us the rest of the week. Let me see. Definitely. I'm seeing on Meetup it says Open Hack is eight o'clock to nine thirty. Oh. There's a lot of mail people. For tomorrow's date. That is. No, that's January 11th. Never mind. I mean, that's fair. Fair point though. They did switch it during COVID. Yeah, they they definitely did that. Um, when they were doing them fully virtual i think a lot of people voted for having them later in the evening but because it's in person i'm pretty sure it's at six i will message the organizer right now before i forget there's still mike yeah um and let me just confirm with him okay. <clears throat> 
Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I just shot him a message. I will. I will confirm with him. Okay. Um. Okay. So what we are working on next? This is going to be our project for the next couple days. Um. So we are going to be recreating a news website. It may be a similar website designed to a certain citynames.com that I shall not mention for any copyright reasons, but uh, the source of the inspiration, their headquarters are actually just two blocks away from anyone who is downtown at Common Space right now, uh, right on that same street. Um, so we are going to be recreating this. Hopefully this feels like a, a pretty standard website this should be something that you know you can kind of feel out and and say like hey this is something that i could actually go to and read the news on right so we're going to recreate this this is going to be a homework assignment it is going to be due on sunday um, we're going to be doing several iterations of this but um the way i always like to get started is i'm going to download this file right to my desktop so i'm just going to drag and drop it um, I did link to this under the news website mockup in the week three, day one outline uh, under the resources section. So if you would like to go download that file, you definitely can. And so I'm going to pop that open. If I double click on it, it's going to open up in preview. Whatever program you want to do to draw boxes on top of something is completely fine with me. Um, if you would like that to be in uh, Keynote or PowerPoint, you can do it there. If you really like diagrams.net or draw.io, you can go there and, and put that in and do boxes on top of it. Um, if you prefer doing it in preview, that's fine. But I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to try and do the quickest breakdown as possible here um, so that we, that we get a good feel of uh, where our components are, where we're headed, what we've gotten done. So um, up at the top, I'm sorry, I can't make this part any bigger, but there's a circle with a little marker tip and in, in it. Um, if you're doing it in preview, you can follow along with me if you want. Um, I'm popping that open and then there's going to be a little icon with a circle and a rectangle on top of it. If I grab that, I get a bunch of different shape types here. So I'm going to click on it and it's going to give me a rectangle. So up in the top here, I've got uh, options for border width, for border color. So I'm going to make mine red. And then this one is controlling the interior color of the box. So like if I make that green, you can see it's going to like block out anything in the box. But I'm going to make that transparent. And I'm just going to really quickly go through, instead of doing columns on everything, I'm just going to break everything down into individual rows. So I've got one row going on up there. I'm going to just copy and paste it. I've got another row going on here. I've got a mega row going on here, and now we're gonna get really fancy. We're gonna start using rows inside of columns, inside of other rows. And so we can actually nest this down. So what that means is we don't have to make this a one and this a three, and then get in here and realize we need more columns going on in here, what we can do is break those rows down into their own independent columns. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, let's shrink down our box here. And I am going to make this a row. I'm going to make this a row. This becomes a row. And then I've got my final row going on down here. And again, we're going to come back. We're going to do columns. But all of that is going to go in. Actually, I'm just going to keep going here. We've got a row going on here. We've got, uh, we can actually probably do all of this in one big row because um, we don't need independent columns in there. That's kind of one just big block. We can take this and put this down here. And then we need another row here. So we're going to say our advertisement because we might need to independently style that. We've got a row going on for our image. And we've got another row going on down here. Okay, now for our columns, I like to break that down into another color. So I'm going to put in a new box. I'm going to make that blue 
and I'm going to say, all right, we got a column going on here. We've got a column going on here. And we've got a column going on in here. And we're just going to keep going, right? So hopefully none of this is surprising to you guys. Hopefully this feels like uh, feels like this is making sense. Does anyone, while I'm doing all of this, does anyone have questions on kind of like how I'm identifying where columns go or why I'm putting them where they are? What are you using, Meg? What's that? What are you using? What, what is this? Uh, this is a program oh. called Preview. It's built right into your Mac. So if you double click on the PNG file that you download from the outline, this is the default program that's going to pop open. And what tool do you use to make the, um, I think I just found it, the rectangles, yep. Yep, so you're going to click on this little circle icon. It's called the markup toolbar. Uh, it's got a little pen in it uh, and then a circle around it. And then you're going to come over to the shapes over here and grab your rectangle. The shapes is the rectangle with a circle behind it. And then uh, once you get your first rectangle created, you can kind of drag things out the, however you want. The uh, third section of the toolbar is going, the first one is going to control your border width. The second one is going to control the color of the line of the border. And then the last one is going to control the color of that rectangle. And so if you pick the white one with a red slash through it, it's going to make that box transparent. So all you see is the, the border color. This is my go-to tool for when someone says it's not working. And I say, you just have to click on this button. And they say, I don't see the button. I screenshot it. I open it in preview. I put a giant red box on it. I send it out to them and they go, oh, there is that button there. So preview is a really helpful tool. Um, not only for like, uh, you know, annotating screenshots and stuff, what, what Apple would call marking them up, but it's also really helpful for um, signing PDFs and filling out forms and all of that kind of stuff. I like this. Um, what... um, Max? Yes. I'm sorry, quick question. So you said, how do we get to preview? Because when I went to the outline and clicked on... It, it didn't open up in preview. It opened it up in something different. Yeah. So it's if you're on this page, you're going to hit the little download icon. Oh, you got to click on Okay. And that's going to uh, download it to your doc. And then you can just close out, go down to the bottom, pop open your downloads in, in your doc, and click yep. on news website diagram. And it should open it in preview. Okay. Thank you. It's on the all right. All right. I'm going to stop here because everything else, hopefully the, the columns are self-evident. Um, anyone having a problem with preview or playing around with that tool? Diagrams.net is definitely going to be more helpful for doing your wireframes, right? Because you can kind of see the grid on top of it. Um, but preview, I have found, is an invaluable tool. Um, and so if anyone has questions on it, I will just take a break and see how you guys are making out. Okay, I've got it open now. I just have to, like, make all of my columns and such. Cool. Yeah, and you won't have to turn this in as an assignment, um, but hopefully you guys can, uh, you know, just start breaking it down, start realizing where your layout is, where you need your rows, all of that. How do you duplicate the box, like, so quickly? Yep, like just click it, and then hit Command-C, and then Command-V. Mm -hmm. And then you can just, yep, and now you have it copied, and you can just keep Command-V, Command-V, everything you do. Yeah, you can do that too. And then just drag them around. Seems like everyone's kind of playing around, so give everyone a minute before I keep going. <laughs> hey, uh, 
Max, yep. I don't see the outline for week four. I think I'm, I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong place, but I didn't week see th- it. Week three, day one. We on week three? I know it's, it feels like you've been here forever, but we are in week three, believe yeah. it or not. No one answer that question. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh... Appreciate that. <laughs> thanks, Max. <laughs> We have very few people who we lose throughout the program. Trust me, I know it feels like a very long program, but we get you through it. We're not going to leave any stragglers behind. It does get more fun, believe it or not. Once we get out of front end, we go into JavaScript, and that's like a whole other part of the brain. And then we get into full stack, and that's a whole other part of the brain. And then you get to the end of it. And you're like, wow, I was really exposed to a lot here. I can decide where I want to go. Um, and I really think that Brandon hit the nail on the head there, right? Of like, you're going to go through this program and there are going to be parts of it that you hate. And you may make it to the end of HTML and be like, I cannot stand this. I don't know how I'm going to make it through a six month long program. And then we'll start on JavaScript and you'll be like, oh, this is a lot more fun than HTML. Um mm-hmm. Or you may go, I hate this and I love the HTML. And that's also completely fine. There will be different parts. You, we will pique your interest in different areas of the curriculum for sure. That's how I felt in the prep work. I'm like, HTML, okay. I got through the JavaScript and I'm like, oh, my <laughs> JavaScript, you can do a lot of fun stuff with, though. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. It's harder, but it's like rewarding. That's what my mind works. Mm-hmm. Like, Max? Out. Yes. How do you make the like the outline so that you can make the boxes like that transparent red like you did? Yeah, so um, I know it's kind of hard to see on my monitor, but up at the top, you see the third section of the toolbar. It looks like there's a box with a smaller like border inside of it. Well, first of all, did you get your rectangle created? Let me ask that. Okay, so it, it looks like a square, but yeah, hold on. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, it's just going to be easier if you share your screen because I can just annotate on top of it. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so yep, you got your box created. What you're going to do is so sorry. this one's controlling the border width, this one's controlling the border color, and this one's controlling the inside color of the box. Okay. So, if you click on that last one right here, and then pick this one over here, the red line through it, it's trying to show you that that's transparent. Okay. And oh, now, okay. if you come back to this one, you can actually make your border a little bit thicker there. So maybe pick, you know, that one. Okay. And now you got a, a little thicker box that you can move around. And if you hit Command C and then hit Command V, that's going to uh, duplicate the box. So you've okay. got two of them. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. It's more like networking and like, you know, some people show projects, work on projects. So it's not like No. No, but some people do bring stuff to work on and like you can talk about ideas. Do you mind sharing that um breakdown really quick since we kind of fell behind over here? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's going in live stream and thank you. Um, broken down. I'll also add that to the outline right now. All right, how are how are we feeling? Are we good to move on? I have a quick question. Is there an undo button? Because it's like I made a box, it got stuck there. I just want to delete it. Yep, if you just yep. click on the box once and then hit the delete key on your keyboard, that will get rid of it. Okay. Thank you. Now, I will note on um, Preview that Preview will let you keep editing the boxes and, like, working with them. But the second you save the file and close it, when you reopen the file, those boxes are no longer editable. 
So preview is a great tool for like doing something quick and dirty. But if you send something out and then someone sends it back to you and was like, hey, you missed a box here. Or could you move this one over? You can't go back and edit the boxes. So that's a really good note is that once you close the file, what it does is it flattens all the boxes on top of the image so you can't edit them anymore. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're good to move on. Cool, we're all good. Cool. Cool. Okay. And you don't have to, you can just follow along with the one that I've created. Um, you, you, this is just so we have something to reference. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be something that you're turning in or anything, but I would encourage you to play around with the tools. Uh, have an idea of like, hey, it is quicker to do it in Previewer or, or oh, diagrams.net is more my jam or I want to dump it in Google Sheets and, and use a, a PowerPoint tool instead. Lots of different ways of, of getting this done. Okay, so I'm going to move this. Let's just put it over here. I'm going to close my VS Code, which means I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do a new live share link. I'm going to do a new window. I'm going to open folder I think could have done it from either spot I'm not sharing my screen now I am okay I'm gonna go to my desktop my my code my new folder and I'm gonna do a new one for week three then a new folder for day one and I'm gonna pop that open I am going to do a new file and it's gonna be a text file and I'm gonna hit command s to save that and I'm gonna save that as index.html I'm going to do my exclamation mark enter. That's going to get my template going on. I'm going to call this CIC news in the title tag. And before I forget, I'm going to do a new file. I'm going to call that style.css. I'm going to go back into my head tag and do a link. And the attribute I'm going to use is href. And that's going to go to style.css. And the type of that link, the relationship of that link is going to be a style sheet. And then I'm going to do another link tag, but instead of typing that, I'm going to go to getbootstrap.com. Nope, nope. I'm going to spell it right and not... <laughs> get to some random website. I'm going to click get started. I'm going to go down and I'm going to copy the CSS link and come over here. I'm going to paste that and I'm going to make sure that my style.css comes after it. I'm going to save hey, that. Man. Yes. Oh, you were getting ready to do it. I'm going to say, wait, we're not following along. Why? I am now sharing the live stream link, which is different than the one from earlier. When I switch folders, I have to open up a, a new live stream. So sorry about that. Hopefully you can join in on that. And I'm also going to start my live server, which means I've got an empty box here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back into my index. I'm gonna do a uh, hello world. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna have that showing up and I'm gonna take a break and make sure everyone can catch up. So we, created a new folder, we opened it in VS Code, we created our index.html, we used our exclamation mark shortcut, we updated the title, so my CIC news is showing up in my browser up here at the top. I went in, I created my style.css, and I linked that in my index.html. I went to bootstrap.com, I dumped in my link, and hopefully all of this is starting to feel really comfortable because we're going to be doing lots of files, creating them from scratch again. So if you get stuck anywhere, now's the time to to voice where you got stuck. The last thing I'm going to do before I promise I'm done, I'm just going to do an H1 and I'm going to say color is red. And what that's going to do is test to make sure that my style.css is linked properly in my browser. Thanks. Did you share that um, with the live share? I did. It is in the live stream channel in Slack. Yeah.
I redid it on my thing and it went over with my woman. I just struggled to open. So now I gotta do it. So the the file that we're making it's week three day one. You got it. Okay. The the folder should be week three. Inside week three, you should have a day one folder. Okay. And then the two files inside of the day one folder that you're creating are index.html and style.css. Okay. Yeah, I just put it in the Zoom chat too, but it's also in Slack too. So, uh, okay, I finally got to like, so not that you say anything else is happening differently, or just normally what we do. There's just a new live share link, so the old one. Oh no, I got past that. Oh, okay. I'm saying, like, I'm, I got the. You got your folder, you got your code, you got your live share, that's it, you're good. Okay. Yep. If you've got Hello World showing up in red, you're caught up and good to go. All right, let me start a poll just so we've got an idea of where we're at. Poll is open in Zoom. Um, if you're stuck anywhere, let me know. Tiffany, you have a question? Yes, which one do we pick for the poll if we're like still trying to get everything up and going just don't vote yet okay. yeah the, the way i use the polls is it tells me how many people have voted not only where you guys have voted and when i don't have a lot of votes in i know you guys are still working on it so that's how i kind of use the poll of like hey only seven people have voted so far so someone's still got to be working on it um so i just give everyone a couple more minutes before we move on Still fine for uh, copy and paste that link H R E S. The bootstrap link, yes, yeah, always copy and paste it. Yeah, and the reason why we copy and paste it is because they release new versions of it, and so when the version changes, the link to that uh, also changes. And so on projects, I try to always go to their website and copy and paste it instead of pulling it from some old code because you always, you almost always want to use the newer version that's available. Almost. Caitlin spoken like a true software dev. <laughs> All right, we are, we only have seven votes in so far. If anyone's stuck, let me know now or needs me to recover anything. Otherwise, I want to keep moving. Um, quick question, Max. For yep. the how do we get the um the starter code again? It's the exclamation point and what is it? Enter. Thank you. Okay. Just make sure you're in a index.html file because if you're not, if you don't have the file saved, it doesn't know what shortcuts to use. So you want to make sure you've got that saved as index.html before you try the shortcut. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Last call for questions. Um, mine's not red. Uh, okay. Go ahead and share your screen. It's going to be something with, do you have a pound <laughs> sign in your style.css file name? Yeah. Yeah, I did that again. <laughs> <laughs> so the the pound sign that i think i i showed you guys this is just the vs code icon that's showing you that it recognized that the file is css 
but you shouldn't be putting a pound sign in your file name. You should just have it be style.css and then based off it being ending in CSS, it's going to detect that and show the pound sign there. But yes, you should never be putting a pound sign in your file name. That is fraught with peril as a developer. Did you get it read? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. We've got 10 of 13 people voted. If you are stuck, um, feel free to message Caitlin and we can put you in a breakout room or she can help you in person. But I think we want to keep going here. So I am going to move back to... Uh, what did I do? Okay, so we've got this blue... Um, nav bar going on at the top right we've got a menu button a news company here and a sign in button so i'm going to do this largely from scratch except for the grid system so we get a good feel of how um we get a good feel of of uh css and start using that a little bit more kind of stretching our legs there so i'm going to go back to my index and bootstrap likes everything to be in a container but there are actually two different kinds of containers. So if I do a div class equals container, and I put my text here again, what we're going to do, what we will see is what we're used to, right? Uh, text goes here, but if I get it on a super wide screen, you see how it's kind of constraining it so that even if my screen got a lot, lot bigger, it wouldn't get any wider than this width here. And it may be a little easier if I go into my style.css and I add, uh, let's target our container. <laughs> and I'm going to do a border of 2px solid blue. So you see our, our container is kind of constrained here. So if I go to a smaller screen, it's always going to give me a little breathing room on the sides of that box until I get to a really small screen, and then it's going to take up the full width. But what it's also doing is making it so if I go super wide, it's never going to get wider than this. So even if I pull it out on my 27-inch monitor, it's still not going to be any bigger than this blue area. Well, that's fine for most websites, but there are some websites that you really want it to span that full width. You do want to decide, hey, I want this to get super wide, at which point you can just come in and use a container fluid instead. So container dash fluid. And now when I save this, you see no matter how big I make my window, it's always going that full width of the window. And that's a really important decision to make. It's your first div, right? So you want to decide, hey, when I get this on a super big monitor screen, do I want it to all be constrained? And when you do primarily text-based content, there you do want to reach for that container, not the container fluid. But because I want my nav bar to really stretch out the whole width of the page, I'm going to do mine in a container fluid to get started. And then we're going to put all the page content in a regular container. So you'll see how that works in a second. Any questions on container fluid before everyone understand the difference? Hold on, speed and ticket. <laughs> okay. Where are you at? Where, what do you want me to go over? Um, okay. So the, the only two changes I made was I put my H1 in a div class container fluid. And then in my style.css, I only did this for to, to show you kind of how big the container is. You don't actually have to add this line to your code. But basically all I'm doing is I put my H1 in a container and just showed the two different ways of using a container fluid, which is always going to be full width compared to a container, which is going to be full width on smaller screens, but it's also going to have a max width where it's not going to get any bigger than a certain point. Okay, so thank you. The only thing you need here is just the container fluid with your H1 in it, and I'm actually going to delete out my container fluid border for my CSS because I was just showing you kind of that, that size. Okay, so from here, I know that I want to use the grid system, right? I've got three sections that I want to break up. 
So I am going to say, I'm going to delete out my H1 text here. I'm going to delete out my H1 color red. And we are going to add a div class equals row. And then I know I've got three equal sections. So before I touch any content, I want to do my layout. So I'm going to say, let's start with them being equal columns. Again, making sure my closing divs are lining up the right spot. And I'm just going to say one, two, and three. And I'm going to hop back over to my browser and I'm going to see my one, my two, and my three. Okay, so if I've got that going, now I can start looking at menu, news company, and sign in. So I'm going to say menu, CIC news, and sign in. Come back over. Okay, that that's my content's there. But that blue is really telling me, hey, this makes it feel like a nav bar. So let's target the blue and get that working. I'm going to add an ID onto this that says navbar. Go to my style. And because it's an ID, I'm using my pound sign. And I'm going to say navbar. And I'm going to say, hey, that background is going to be blue. Now I got my blue background, but my text is off. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say my color is going to be white. Color always refers to font or text color. Okay. That's good, but it, it needs some space at the top and the bottom of it. So I'm going to say, hey, now would I want to use margin or padding there? Padding. Padding, why? Isn't it like a full, like a full um, color? Like yeah, you got it, Wayne. You're you're you were demonstrating the right thing. Of it's padding because we want the blue area to grow. We don't want a gap between the blue area and the top of the page. So if I just did margin top here, it's going to move my blue bar down off the top of the page. But if I did padding, it's going to add that blue area inside the border area, inside the background color area, instead of pushing it down, the, the pushing the whole box down. So that's, uh, that's good, but I also want some padding on the bottom. And let's, I think 15 is going to feel more right than 20. Let's see. Okay, that's looking good, but alignment isn't right, right? I think that's the next obvious thing that we want to do. So I'm going to come back into my index, and I know that my sign-in button needs to go over to the end of that column. So I'm going to say text end. Better. Now I got my CIC news. I want that to be smack dab in the center. Okay. And I would really like this to stand out a little more or be a little fancier. So I'm going to, I'm going to get really fancy here. Let's have some fun. I'm going to add an ID to this that says uh, site name. Uh, and I'm going to say, hey, in my nav bar, I've got a site name that I would like to be bold. And we got that bold, but that's really boring to me. So there are only about 10 fonts that we can use that are guaranteed to be web safe, which means every device, no matter what device we look at this on, it's going to have that font. But Google thought that was really dumb. Google thought that you should be able to pick whatever font you want and be able to use it. So Google created this awesome site called fonts.google.com. Um, Caitlin, if you could drop a link to this in the resources in the outline, that would be appreciated. Um, and they gave you all of these different font options that you can pick from. So I think grape nuts is going to sound real or is going to look really good in in our site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into that, and I'm going to say select this style. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop it up here with all of my different font options. Um, and so I want this link tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing into my index.html 
and I'm gonna put it even above, uh, I'm gonna put it between my bootstrap and my style sheet. So it's gonna put in a couple link tags for me. I just wanna fix the connection, or the, the indentation there. And then I'm gonna take my font family, copy that, go back to my style, don't worry, I'm about to pause here, and paste that in. <laughs> now I commented out my font weight, just to see what it's going to look like, I'm going to save, come back here, and now I've got my CIC news in. So I'm going to mm -hmm. wait, make one more adjustment. I'm just going to make my font size, let's try 36, it's probably a little too big. Let's try 24. All right, my CIC news is there. I kind of like that styling. You can pick whatever font you would like. But let me recap, and then I will take a break and let you guys catch up. So what I did is I was in my index.html. I've got my columns all loaded up there. I added my text end. I added my text center. And I got my, my text showing up where I wanted it to. Okay, great. No CSS changes so far. But I thought this CIC news was a little boring. So what I did is I went to fonts.google.com. I scrolled through and picked whatever font that I would like. I then hit select the style over here on the right. And that should open this little sidebar going on here. So I took these link tags, highlighted them, copied them, moved back to my index.html and pasted them in here. They may come in a little wrong indentation-wise. Go ahead and tab them over, get them all set up. Now the browser knows what that font is. That's all we told it is, hey, if, if your CSS is requesting this font, here is where you can go at Google to go get that font. But now we need to tell our CSS to use that font. So what we did is we added an ID onto our div here so that we had something to target to say, hey, use this special font. We then went to our style.css, came back to our Google Fonts, and copied this font family name and pasted it into a selector targeting our site name. Then all I did was added in a font size to make it a little bit bigger, and we're done. So I know that was a lot, so mm -hmm. we're going to pause and start the poll and let everyone catch up. Max, have you used Milligram yet? I have not. I'm not even familiar of familiar with it. They have like the uh, the font that looks like it would be on like an Apple website or something. Oh, um, interesting. So the font Apple uses is called San Francisco, and it is copyrighted. So if you're not using it on an Apple device, you're legally not allowed to use the same font that that Apple uses. But obviously with fonts, there's a lot of uh, inspiration. And so people create similar fonts to the copyrighted ones in order to get around that frequently. <laughs> couple pe we only have four vote votes in the poll so i think people are still working on it if anyone gets can stuck I anywhere just let us know can i ask you a question yep. um how did you do that um well i'm not doing it on here now but i'm just watching because i like watching the vids after and then sure I'm, like doing it by myself but um like how did you do that text like i couldn't figure out on my weather site because like the where the city was i could not get that to text in so like i don't know if it was something in my id did you do something specifically in your id for that or like a link reference how did you get it to yeah so in my cic news i added an id and called it site name not and the CIC news the one that's on the right side like where it says sign in oh I'll yeah i added one that says text end and that's it? That's it. Not and and I, you, it does have to be in a row in a call. So, like, all of this up here has to be correct in order for this text end to work properly. Okay. 
You gotta get some of the quotes with the cold cow. Yeah, I just couldn't figure out who's just like coming back. Who's coming up? Like the one that just started. So it looks like I'm there. Oh, you are here? Um, it was. It's not for me. It was like for the whole group, but I could not figure out when it was the whole freaking thing. Oh no! What's the week I think it's not something like this, but I just couldn't figure it out. All right, so it's called the three percent. Um, I have a question. Yep. I think I think I uh, copy paste the same uh, font, but it's looking up a little weird. <laughs> let's let's uh, put a visual with what weird looks like. Go ahead and share your screen. It's just not the same. Okay, so this is mine. This one's yours. Uh, uh, <laughs> And I even like I went to I went to Google Fonts and copied the the grape nuts one, and it showed up like this. So then I was like, well, let me copy paste his, and it still showed up like that. So I don't know what I did wrong. Um. Okay. okay all of <laughs> that looks right. Go to your style.css for me. Uh, put a space between grape and nuts. Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> you need to fall back. Yeah, so great 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 point Caitlin. So, if you look at um if you look at this here, it says grape nuts and cursive. So, what this list is doing is it's using what is called a fallback font. So, basically what it's saying is it's saying, "Hey browser, check to see if you can find grape nuts. If you can find grape nuts, use it." If you can't use it, go find a fallback font. Whatever font you have installed on the computer that looks cursive, use that instead. And so the way we can test that is I can actually comment out these three lines that are pulling in grape nuts, right? So if I hit command and slash while those are while those are highlighted, it's going to comment it out. So now when I go back to my code, you don't have to be following along here. I'm just, just showing a, a point. Now it's going to be that same cursive font. But what we can actually do is say, hey, if you can't find grape nuts, try and use Times New Roman. And if you can't find Times New Roman, then go to cursive. And so now it's going to be Times New Roman because that's the fallback, right? Now, every font, every computer has a serif font, a sans serif font, and a cursive font. No matter what device you're on, it's going to have at least one of those three or it's not considered a web browser or whatever. So that's what this list is doing is it's saying, hey, if you can't load grape nuts for some reason, go try Times New Roman. And if you can't use Times New Roman, use cursive. So without changing any of this code, I can actually comment in my grape nuts uh, Google font to pull it in. And you'll see it goes back to that. But if for whatever reason, Google fonts was down and it couldn't pull that information in, it would use your fallback, which was cursive or Times New Roman in this example. So I'm just gonna take that out just so we covered it and it's still gonna be the same. All right, we got six people in. I'm gonna give everyone two more minutes. If you have not voted in the poll, please vote in the poll and then we will keep going. Or ask questions if you have questions. Hey, um, my code doesn't look the same as yours. Go um, ahead. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Here, the pre-connect link. Yeah, so just delete out um, when you pasted. You must have had something started. Delete from here over to there. And save that, and then you should be good to go. Thanks. Uh, yep. I don't have big nuts, but I think it loaded properly. I, before you explained what this was, I the example listed it as serif, so I put it in as serif. I yep. switched it back and forth a couple times, and it didn't change this font here. So uh, I think it loaded the font correctly. Yeah, that looks like Roboto to me. So Roboto slab should be similar. Roboto is like one of the top three most popular Google fonts, or at least it was back in the day. Um, so that's how I can recognize it. Cool. Thanks.
Okay, I want to push and get one more row done, and then I will. I promise I will give you time at the end of class. So I'm going to keep pushing here. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to get this row done in the center. And again, we're going to use Bootstrap Grid, but we're going to try and make our own components and play around with that. Once we get to the mobile site, we're actually going to pull in Bootstrap's um, nav bar, and we're going to start playing around with that and understanding the benefits of using pre-built components. But for now, I want to get my links bar done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down. I'm outside of my nav bar div. So I'm going to create a new div. It's going to be a row. I know I'm going to need to target things in here. So I'm going to create a new ID and I'm going to call it links bar. And by the way, if camel casing drives you crazy and you're more of an underscore person or a dash person, that's completely fine. This is your code. You should be able to write it however you want. I'm going to do my div class call again. And I know all the stuff in here is centered, right? So right off the bat, I'm going to say text center. Okay, and then because these are all in line next to each other, instead of using divs, which would make them wrap onto following or onto subsequent rows, I'm going to use a span. Right, and this, the way you can think about a span is like an inline div. It's literally, if you think about it in Word, you know how you can change it to float or to be in line. That span is making that be in line. So I'm going to say span, and I'm going to say top stories, and I am going to keep going here and add another span called news, sports, and life. Okay, I'm going to save. I'm going to come back over to my browser. And okay, it's there, but man, is that ugly. We need some space between them. So I'm going to take my links bar and I'm going to go back into my CSS, paste in that ID using a, a hashtag. And I'm going to say, go look for any span tags inside of my links bar and add some margin to the left. That's going to be, let's try 10 to start and margin to the right. That's going to be another 10. Now that's spaced out a little bit more, but it doesn't feel like a bar yet. So let's target our links bar itself. Let's add some padding in the top to move it down. Let's add some padding in the bottom to make it feel like it's moved down a little bit. And let's add a border to the bottom. That's 1px solid. And let's use light. Let's use light salmon. That looks like a pretty one. Max. Yes. When you're typing span and then you hit return and it auto completes, so it gives you an open and close tag. And then it puts your cursor in the middle. Is there a way to um, auto-complete, like, or to jump out of the span without having to use your mouse. So, like, if you open up a new, like, I like that. I hit return, that. yeah, type span, hit return. Or just right. delete it, just type the word span, hold on, just type the word span, and then hit return. Now, yeah. once you type, um, just type anything, is there a way to get out of there now without having to use your mouse? I want to take too much time. I was just wondering. I've been using a five-year-old. You can go with your cursor keys. Yeah, I've been using an arrow key. Yeah, an arrow keys. Yeah. Okay, so like. Because uh, I press enter, enter, and it's going to hurry up and click. Command and your right arrow key is going to take you to the end of the line. Okay. There are a lot of VS Code Command keyboard shortcuts. Command and right and, and like, right. some of them you use all the time, and some of them you wish you remembered, and it's hard to remember them when you need them. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Okay. Oh, you should show them. Show them what, Caitlin? <laughs> Creating multiple spans at once. I'm going to save that one. Not yet? Okay. Not yet. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is um, if we go back to the mock-up, uh, which I stupidly closed. Um. 
if you zoom in here, we've got this nice orange section showing up here, right? And what that's trying to show is that top stories is the current section that like we have selected and that's bold. So to target that one specific area, I'm going to come in to my index and add a uh, class here, or we can do it as an ID because it only one will ever be active and I'm going to call it active. So I'm going to go back to my CSS and I want to be careful because I don't want to target something active outside of my links bar. So I'm going to still add in my links bar as part of my selector and I'm going to target the active thing inside of our links bar. Now, how do you think we can pull this off? I have a quick question, small question. Yep. Why are there so many spaces in the style CSS board? Spaces okay. in where? Style. Style CSS. Yeah, because for reading purposes. Yo, oh. just, just here? Yeah, like overall, like throughout the whole thing, like why is this? That's what we told you to do. Yeah, it just makes the code a little bit more readable. So, oh. you know, we could cram all of these together, but it just makes it a little bit more spread out. And some people may do it like this. They may have their nav bar grouped together and then have another section of their code for like their links bar and then space that out a little bit more as well. So like the, the parts of the CSS are broken up, um, but that's really just a, a personal preference. Now, I will say the spaces between uh, hunks of CSS code don't matter. The spaces here do matter because basically we're saying look for active only in links bar. So if we put this together, that would actually mean something different than if we had a space between it. Okay, okay so all we're going to do to get that nice little orange going on is we're going to apply a border to the bottom and we're going to try 3px solid orange pop over here and now that's doing what i want but it's not where i want right i want that further down so what we're gonna have to do is get creative because if i apply some padding to the bottom and let's try it at 10 px that pushes it down exactly where i want it to be and I don't like that that orange is on top of the orange, so I'm just going to fiddle with it. I'm going to make it a little thicker. I'm going to put this back to maybe a uh, light gray. And now I pushed it too far, right? I really want it there. So if you uh, pinch on your trackpad, you can zoom in and see that it's a little bit off. And we're going to try something. I know it's towards the end of class here. I'm going to go into the inspect tool. That's going to pop this open. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see the padding that I have added. If I click on that number and just use my down arrow, I can shrink it up and see that eight is the perfect number for what I want. We'll dive into the dev tools tomorrow though, or, or in the future, you don't need to worry about doing a deep dive there. So I'm just going to adjust this to eight. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to call that a pretty good nav bar. Coming over here, that looks right. The last thing I didn't do is make this bold. So I'm just going to add a font weight of 700. It's going to make that bold. And I'm going to call that a good nav bar. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to live share the code. So how does it, how is that little nav bar, right? Because you have it in a dead weight, the top stories. Like how, I got to make that back. How is it just that size? Like it's literally like just in the middle, you mean? Yeah. A ask that question again. Sorry. She wants to know how you got all the links just in the center. Well, not yeah. all the links. How is that orange bar right oh, under the nav bar? The yeah, nav, right under the the underline. Yeah. yeah. Is it because you have it within Because I I added an ID called active and only applied it to top stories. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So if I move that active to like sports, it's actually magically going to do the right thing and oh, move okay. to that section. Yeah. Good question. Oh, did not mean to delete that code. Sorry. <laughs> Difference between I, Command I X and Command Z. Go actually, ahead, Doug. Yep. Uh, if um, top stories is 
top story is the inside of Lynx Bar, and Lynx Bar has a bottom padding of 10. How come there's not a space between the bottom border of top stories and the bottom border yeah. of Lynx Bar? Because ask that question again. Why isn't there a space between the link link bar has ten pixels padding on the bottom and the gray line is the bottom of links bar? Correct. And then so if if top stories is inside of links bar, shouldn't there be a space between that nap, that the top stories and the links bar? Like the Top stories border and the links bar border. Because it's an inlined element, it's not going to affect the spacing of the parent element. Okay. So it's kind of like the H1, H2, in a sense. Yes. Like H1 is always going to be the heading. H2 will be like the subheading. Like, Caitlin, is that the right answer? <laughs> I'm con. Wait, can you go to your code really quick? Yeah, so so the, the question is, why is it that when I'm adjusting this padding, that th that the link bar itself is not getting bigger? Well, it's it's why isn't the, the bottom padding in the pixels. link bar, why doesn't that make a space between the ed edge of the, the border of the link bar and the border of the active? The active one. So it is, right? If I take this border off, it's still applying it's, to the active and all the other links on it. Right? It so links bar is the parent. So that's what's pushing the bottom gray bar down. Yes. Wait, so when you take the when you just took the border off, it stayed there? When I yeah. took the padding off, oh, it yeah. moved the border up. Yeah. But okay, the border you... stayed there. Oh, but isn't, like that. isn't top stories inside of Links Bar? That's what I was. That's kind of what I was asking. Just sticking out of the bottom. Top the stories end? is inside of Links Bar. Yes. Can you go to your code? Oh, it's saying like. So <laughs> that, that border is the box that's surrounding top stories and stuff. Right. So when you put then, the padding, it pushed the border down more. It pushed yeah. the border of Links Bar down more but not the padding of the parent links bar. Right. But so the links bar doesn't stretch to fit the... It side. normally would if it wasn't an inline element. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's so if I make this a div... But I totally understand exactly what you're Then it thinking. would do that. Then yeah. it's going to do really weird stuff. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Like, right, it's because right. it's a span. Okay, I get it now. That's like, a really good question, and I'm glad Caitlin backed me up on my answer because I was yeah. not but completely I confident. That. Like, that was a really good question. But then I'm like, wow, and that's like, how is that only box like? I was like, I don't know, it just does. <laughs> it's doing what we want it to. We don't question the computer when it does what we want it to. But that was good. That was a clarification. Yes. No, yeah. that was really good. Good question, Doug. Do you fully understand, Doug? I do. I do. I'm not sure. I fully span, understand. I'm not sure you understand it. I think it's because the span is an inline element. Yes. But like Nicole was in saying, like elements. an H1 or an H2, it's something, it's not a div. It's not a box. It's just a thing. And so actually you'll find that things will overflow if you don't want them to sometimes mm -hmm. because of styling issues. So yeah. Yeah, spans are, you have to be careful between your divs and your spans. Yeah, that was a really good question. I'm still <laughs> thinking about it now. <laughs> yeah. I love when you get a question and you're like, crap, I actually I don't, know. don't know the answer to that. <laughs> That's part of the fun of a live class, right? Is that like, if you're just watching these videos on YouTube, you're like, uh, but I want to ask that question. Like, why is it doing that? But the joys of teaching live is I'm like, uh, I got to figure that out. Give me a second. I need to regroup. <laughs> oh, that's what I miss. I'm missing all the links. I'm like, what am I missing? I don't have any links. Line at all. Yeah, for the, I never picked up. But wait, so I have a follow-up question. Yes. 
<laughs> so, so if the links bar padding doesn't doesn't have to contain the, the top stories span, then why when I add, make the top padding 20 or 10 even, it, it's creating space around the span. So padding is space the, inside? The, right, but the space inside the links bar is making the links bar uh, bigger, which is pushing the border down. But if but you is, did that, is it getting bigger? Is it creating a bigger space between its between its border and the span elements? No, it's creating a bigger element overall. Yeah, margin creates space between things, and I. How do you describe this? So if you added a top border to the span it wouldn't push things further. You could add a top border to that span and it would do the same thing where you could bring it all the way up to the top of the span of the right. parent so, div. So I, I'm thinking of it, maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, that padding is the space between the border and the content. Yes. Yeah. Inside. Oh, right. Yes. Inside. Yep. Okay. Okay. Padding so, is inside. And so when we increase that, there's more space between the spans and the border of the the links bar technically so yeah so like what it what what it's doing is it's figuring out what the height of the content is inside of that div and so if we had a multi-line well you you're not supposed can you have a multi-line span i guess you could have a multi-line span what it's doing is, is it's figuring out the height of the box based off of the content just with, the content, not the padding or the border see, of that's the what, content. That's right. Correct. Yeah. How was that padding? Right. And enough? then it's adding the padding on top of that, and then it's drawing the border, and then it's finding the margin and pushing anything out of that margin space. But it's only creating padding between the span content and the links border, not the spans padding or... Correct. Right. And the only yes. reason it's not doing that is because it's a span. Yeah. If we made that a div, then it would factor in the child divs padding and margin and make the entire box grow. But because it's a span, we're going to ignore padding, border, and margin on some, the spans. Some elements have inherent, like, like they're like given margin and padding, right? And am I right, Max? Can you, can you make that a div real quick I, then? I don't know how- We got a whiteboard to draw it on real quick. Gonna... Yeah, so if we if we make it a div, we're gonna run into other problems because divs are gonna push all the content down, right? So if I make this a div and don't forget to update my closing tag and look, now that's my div. That's kind of easy. I was trying to figure out- And so because it's a div, now it's not in line. So it's gonna push the entire parent element down because that parent element needs to contain the child. And the span is kind of set up as like like a chart in a way how it's set up. So that's kind of why they align. It's like not a chime, like a like a checklist. Like we did something before, like a ch checklist, and that's kind of why you keep it in that same format the same way so they can be in the same line. Kind of. Yeah. So now because I've made this a div, if I add uh border bottom uh 500 that's going to make the whole thing grow but because if i switch that back to a span it's still going to show that giant area but it's not going to try and contain it in the parent element got it it won't stretch out the parent correct is the same true for margins on a span they won't stretch out the parent yes Okay. Margin, border, or padding won't stretch out the parent for an inlined element. Okay, so can I show my code? Um, yep. I don't, I don't like. Class is officially over, by the way. So if you would like to get out of here, you can. Uh, you're also welcome to stick around, obviously. Those links are like, like, you can like. Red is on the left, I'm on the right. You can, like, I got a question after okay um say that again you're on the right i'm on the left 
Um, no, you're on the left, I'm on the right. Okay. So, uh, show me what's going wrong in the browser. Okay, one second. My brain's kind of spinning now, good. So he would define whatever he wants to happen to that class. Right. So, I'll just click, I'll just read it. Yeah, so this, I think this is going to. The I'm sorry, I got multiple screens over here. So. <laughs> Wait, how do you change the game code like that? Mm -hmm. I'll show you after one second. So I, I just got to share it. I did this. So it has an idea of that. Do you want me to? Sp oh, never mind. Do you see it? Yeah. If it's in the weak spot. With the ID. <laughs> I'm trying to move it because you're like mm -hmm. right on top of it. Mm -hmm. Appearance. I'm, I'm just guessing. It's go down to the. It's on the left hand side. A little settings and then colors me. Oh. Can you see this? Um. I, I can. Yeah. So so what are you trying to work on? What are you? What's not working that you are trying to get to work? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out why I don't have any color. So I should go on my style CSS. Uh, yeah, go back to your HTML. You might need, okay, you're good. Um, okay, so you've got your style.css. Pop open your file explorer for me. Uh, yeah, okay, that looks good. Um, nav bar, color blue. Okay, go back to your index.html. And you've got your link in. All of those are good. Your. Is there too many links? No, you're missing uh, uh, something on line 18. You're missing a quote on line 18. I see it, but I'm not sure what I have to put. Like, I know there, it should link up with a closing div, so there should be a div. Nope, on. you're literally just missing a quote right there. Oh! <laughs> All right. Come on, there. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. You got it. Now save, and let's see if that brings your color back. If you swipe over with three fingers or four fingers, yep. Um, yeah, and then... Yeah. Okay, you still don't have color? Oh, well, maybe I need to refresh it here. There you go. Okay. All right, thank you. Good work. Hey, Max. Yes. Uh, since you cancel class tomorrow, uh, yeah. do you have any meeting times that you will be available tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Uh, great question. Let me... Let me go open that up in my calendar so you can grab them. Okay. Okay, they should um, be open on my calendar now. All right. All right. Thank you. No problem. Are we all going to the thing. I am actually, I am actually good. I figure it out. Good work. So that's good. Thank God. It will be here. Okay. Who else has questions? Then you guys don't have to miss anything to be able to go, you know? Yeah. Me, Max, I'm missing like a lot of days, I think. <laughs> All right, go ahead and share the screen. Let's get through it. Okay. Um, All right, you are on the right, I'm on the left. Okay. And... So let's get your indentation fixed first. Uh, okay. 32 through 35 need to go through on another level. Uh, okay, so never, ever, ever indent your code with the space bar. You always, always, always want to use the tab key. Oh. So, uh, yeah, put that back, delete the space out there, and now just hit tab, and that's going to take you into the next level. 
Okay, and then do that for 33 through 35. No, no, you hit your space bar there. Um, you got a space in there, though. So go over, delete out the space. Okay, okay now hit tab. Okay, now go to 34. Uh, beginning of 34 and tab. And now 35. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay, now on 36, that can come over. To that line. Uh, To that line. That all looks good. Your closing div for your row looks good. Okay, but now we've got other problems. I'm just going to request remote control. Okay. And if you hit okay on that. Go to Open System Preferences, uh, lock down in the bottom, enter your Mac password. Check off Zoom, and then I can take it from there. Okay. okay, so the other problem here is that you opened a new div. So whenever you open a new div and don't close it, you've got to indent. So I'm okay. just highlighting all of this and hitting tab, and that's going to move it all over for me. Another problem I notice here is you've got a, a stray quote up there. So I'm going to pull that out. Now your div call one, two, three openings and closings for all of them. So your closing row should now be, whoops, should now be here. Now that's all lining up. But we're opening a new one, so that should line up here. Okay. Now we're coming in, and because we didn't close that div yet, everything in here needs to come over. You also have a stray equals going on there, so I'm going to take that out. Okay, now you've closed this column, so we are going to come over. Now we're closing out the row, and then the last thing we're closing is this container fluid. Gotcha. So go ahead and swipe over to your browser and let's see what it looks like. Okay. That's your... Oh, no, that's fine. Good to go. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Mac? Yes. I uh, just want you know, I have an appointment on Thursday uh, to order a feeding specialist. They close at 4.30, but my appointment's like at 4.15, so it might go over a little bit, but I should be here on time. Like no this. problem. Thanks for the heads up. You said you opened up tomorrow, right? Uh, I believe I did. Yeah, it's still blocked out. Um, I might have... Yeah, might have did it for a different day. No, I think my calendar freezes out so you can't book within oh, like, maybe 12 oh, hours of the event. Um, let me just...